Welcome to Through the Wire. Through the Wire. We back, ladies and gentlemen. I do want to remind you that we are going to Toronto this weekend to do a live show in front of a bunch of different people. Came so fast. Man, I cannot believe it. You asked me yesterday, like, what are y'all wearing? I'm like, damn, I forgot we was even leaving this week. I got to schedule a haircut. Me too. I'm just going to put a hat on. And that's <laughs> that's how you get around yeah. that. Uh, you saying you can't get a haircut? That I fast? could. I just don't really feel like going. I'll cut it. <laughs> You'll cut it? Mm-hmm. I got some clippers. You okay. need to cut it. <laughs> the, uh, the, the day's coming soon when KB cuts his hair. I smell it coming. Yeah, it's it's gonna happen. What, what do you mean by so. soon? It's not happening this month. I don't think so. Within a year, maybe. I, it, I it, couldn't even remember what KB looked like with Eric. Cute. You gotta watch the TCW. He go look so funny. I can <laughs> yeah, see it. Is. You just gotta take kind of like picture him without them dreads a little bit. They're not dreads. Uh, TTWTour.com, the RSVPs are still open, completely free, but it is now first come, first serve. We have a ton of people RSVP'd, and, and the venue holds a limited amount. And a good, it's a good amount. It's not like we having seven people with a 1,000 people RSVPing, but we will say, if you're going to get that, get that, because we do go through these live shows where we get a 1,000 RSVPs and only half of the people show up. Yep. Um, so if you really want to be there, be there, baby. We'll yeah, see a y'all there. Of, a lot of y'all want to be there, man, so just make sure – you get there. I think RSVP should be enough. As long as you pull up, you should be good. A lot of people hitting me up saying this, that. Just come. All ages. Pull up. Get there. And you'll be good. Guaranteed. Um, and we're going to put on the show. And I also think a lot of people be scared, too. Because they be like, man, if, what if I ain't there by this time? Most of the time. I, we've yet to have a show where there was people who couldn't get in. We've seen people walking in late. Some people so, walking in way early. People got there before we did. Yeah, that that'd be crazy. That when you pull up and it's already a line of people. I just mean, there I would early. do that for Toronto. Yeah, just because the many. RSVP is so high. But some of the other places, you probably didn't. Necessarily My favorite know. is when people just got off work and they be in their uniform still. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, the type of, that's yeah. how I would be. Because it's like if you go home. Eat, you might get a little comfortable. You might just stay home. And then they gonna or, drop the episode online anyway. Or you gonna wait an extra thirty <laughs> minutes and then be like, "Oh shit, I nah, I didn't fuck." I didn't nod it off. Yeah, so should be a good show. It's gonna be a good show, but make sure you come through, man, because I know a lot of y'all are excited. Can't wait to meet so many different people. We gonna, I think we gonna meet a lot of people that we have oh, communication yeah. with. I would say facts. Um, first time out the country too as a group. He, this is my first time out of the. <laughs> States, I'm. Just, I act like I love this American shit, but really, this whole time I was scared of the city. You'll still be <laughs> in North America, though. I mean, I, <laughs> 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 all right. Congrats to Mike too. We got a project coming. We uh we went to the studio and finished it up last night. Maybe mm-hmm. hey, got his verse in. I did all four of my verses that he that he uh had me do. I, I told Mike he got to start paying a motherfucker. That felt like a work shift, but. I said all of that to say to congratulate Mike. You need to get back in the booth. Oh, I posted the picture. Everybody like, what D Mills? That is that D Mills to the left. They was talking about Rambo, the engineer. Like, no way y'all think that's D Mills behind the D Mills doing the engineer. What is he a big black dude? Does that? No, like, oh, no, not even a little bit. <laughs> no, not at all. That being said, I, it is dropping this Friday, Thursday. Oh, well, wait, ain't Thursday Drake dropping this Thursday? He can't. Drake. I don't think Drake has confirmed when he, I, he just dropped. He just cover dropped that, oh, okay. the cover. Yeah. Art. You know he like the. It? You know he liked to surprise you with his drops. It was made by a two year old, so I'm not gonna criticize it. I liked it. I yeah, I like it. I don't. I don't no. know. The days of like. It's better than the last one. I'll say that. Yes, that's why I like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you, Drake should drop. Who gonna have better numbers, Mike Ben here or, J- or and, Aubrey Drake Graham? And also Drake. <laughs> also, Drake is never going to confirm. He could drop Friday. He's gonna drop. Yeah, he's just gonna randomly do it. Yeah, I'm not the type of artist with that shit mattering for me. My shit is probably the motherfuckers that's gonna listen. Go listen. You need to broaden your horizon. You should be trying to compete. You uploaded it yesterday. Yeah. Okay. You got the track listing? What mm-hmm. track I'm on? What number track I'm on? Two. For real? Nah, it might be three. Okay. Do you say featuring blank blank blank? I put one three each. In. We'll take that. Hmm? How many songs on? Twelve. My shit linked to my disc. Yeah, give me my money. Can you edit the titles <laughs> and stuff? Give me my fucking yeah. royalties. Don't put featuring nobody. You try to put my shit okay. on there and not I want people account. to do the, the <laughs> academics. What? What? When they hear uh, one, three, each. And then I'm going to also. KB was talking that talk. <laughs> he was talking money shit for the first time. That's because it was a mic song. And the beat was way different than anything I would talking normally about do. diamonds and shit. Yeah. I was I'm talking like, about my uh, Cartier with the diamonds as I'm wearing my 
fourteen dollar Casio. I like that watch. <laughs> it's my favorite watch. That ass. It's my my favorite watch. Mm-hmm. You got the uh, the the Disney one too? No, but I got Chicago Bulls version. Spider Man one? I don't got the Spider Man. Oh, one. I need to get my collection up. My fault. My fault. Where do you even get those watches from? Oh, uh, this Casio? one I got on Amazon. Oh. Um, but the actually one guy, the guy that sent us the big old vintage package, he gave me a Chicago Bulls one. Okay. And I made I fixed it because it didn't work. I had to put a new battery in and everything. Look at you. Yeah. Andy man. Thank you, man. That's why he a husband. It's a really good one. He gets shit done. I do. May not be a Rolex or the big, you know, but it's consistent. It's a daddy watch. Is. Yeah. Uh, you need to figure out how how fast you can run a sixty. I press one button and it gets to a stop a stopwatch. Come on, man. Stop playing. I do this. Do we gotta drop the mic? Oh we yeah. You gotta drop the mic. Talk so. to me. Um, last one was basically. Did you lose your phone in the, <laughs> in the did, seat? His no, ass, it's, my, it's, his ass, it's right up there. His ass swallowed it up. Last one was who is your favorite? Or who got you into the game of basketball? And also who won during who won MVP during your born or your birth year? I saw some wild ones, by the way. Some of y'all are so young. We appreciate you. Kevin Durant won MVP. <laughs> <laughs> I was look. A lot of people were like Tim, like Tim, Tim Duncan, Duncan Tim Duncan, yeah. and I was thinking like. Like that sounds really young, but that's still like eighteen years old yeah. at this point. Yeah, you they know, can drive. If you can drive, I mean, even if you can't drive, it's fine. But our target demo is around sixteen through is forty-two. It? Because I'm never going to forget being at summer league, and we had a woman come up to us like, "Oh my gosh, let me can I get a picture?" That mid, was, maybe mid forties. That was like that was the now best. she could be watching this and get very offended. By we appreciate you. <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> That was the best. I think she re- she said it to us, right? She's yeah, like, she I'm said, not I'm not your demographic, yeah. yeah. But we appreciate everybody. Appreciate that you. Me, that she was a Mavericks fan, right? Yes, yeah, she was. That makes me feel good. Yeah. Even, even when like we get uh, like a, a, a dude or somebody that's older than us, I'd be like, rock on. <laughs> or if it's a younger, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. like, when you're talking basketball, you're talking sports, it, it obviously becomes a male-dominated thing. But when you get the females in there, I feel like you're doing For something. Sure. Yeah. Nobody feels alienated. That that's you know that's what, what we want to do. Women ain't supporting bullshit. I tell you that. They, ain't, they might date some bullshit. <laughs> 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 but they might not. put up with some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they not supporting bullshit. Uh, top comment goes to Cameron, who said KG was MVP during his, bo- uh, his uh, birth year. Is that Cameron too? They just said Cameron, so I can even tell you. Uh, Stephen Curry got me into the uh, into ball during the seventy three and nine season. Westbrook MVP and Giannis yeah, is his favorite <laughs> players, and that that kind of made him, you know, jump to that next level. And really so that's a the young game. NBA fan, as far as like how many years he's been watching and everything, because mm-hmm. that was which is probably close. like a lot of them were very similar into that range. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder how many people did Steph Curry like gravitate into basketball just because of his play style and how he he just did things like everybody. You when you watching big men, it's not fun. to Everybody mm-hmm. Steph Curry has a play style that I think is just fun to everybody to watch. You know what what. Proves that I did a TikTok recently that was like guessing who sold more jerseys, right? It was yeah. this player, this player. And one of the questions was Joel Embiid or Jordan Poole? Who do y'all think sold more jerseys? Jordan Poole. I guess Jordan Poole. It's Jordan, Jordan Poole. Poole. That was actually Joel Embiid. Oh. But it's about like a thousand total. Like it's like a but like it's, it's 12th close? versus 13th. Oh, wow. And I'm like, bro. And then it was Jokic versus somebody. And like this, oh, Jokic versus LaMelo. And it's Lamelo. Lamelo sold more jerseys. It's like, man, nobody really but gives a damn about. The I don't think man. Jokic. Jokic is like, I don't think he's marketable to the point where people Who's are buying wearing a Jokic jersey. Except if you're in Denver. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Also, Lamelo is one of the most famous basketball players. Yep, because he's yeah. been famous since eighth grade. Social media presence <laughs> and stuff. Um, but yeah, Steph. Curry, that's a very good question, though, Derek, because I feel like LeBron did that for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but I also think that the rise of places like um. House of Highlights and stuff, where it's just drop it, Curry highlight here, Curry highlight here. You can't help but to be inside the university NBA, and it probably turned a lot of people into NBA fans. Yeah, to the casual fan, guards are way more fun to watch than bigs. Yeah, got the ball all the time. Yeah, the range. Some of them can dunk on you. Yeah, like it's it's a lot. It's even a lot. like a Gilbert Arenas, that he probably had people really looking at him. No, because Gilbert Arenas was very fun to watch. He was, but people didn't really appreciate Gilbert. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't a highlight time. So I mean, oh yeah, you're right. Casual fan and watching a Wizards game, I don't think so. Yeah, they probably didn't like. Watch them miss that free throw. <laughs> this week's drop the mic. About? Yeah, the one with LeBron. <laughs> this week's drop the mic. Games to the NBA with a D roll. 
Yeah, we staying on uh, all the stories. I'm on his shit though. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> he is not letting you get this out. No, he's not. Uh, so to drop Spin the mic, out. Shit. I've been trying for like five minutes. <laughs> The be- uh, what is the what is your best basketball memory in your playing days? We're gonna kind of stick with the stories and also people gonna lie, but like I said, we we tell the truth around here. What's the highest you scored in a game before? I think uh-huh. twenty eight. Damn, Damn, that nigga balling over there. I was young though. When you young, it don't really count. It, well, it wasn't like I was in fucking uh senior year high school. Well, let's say for the people of age, high school or college. Oh my God! Nobody's playing a college but watching this episode. How you know? <laughs> Just being honest no, with that's you. That's a lie. We had a we guy definitely. I have a lot of Florida like people University. from like college athletes that I like always hit me with a follow oh, on Instagram. Phone. So I know they got to be like my fault, my fault. watching or something. My man from Florida, literally, he was gone. Oh yeah, KB was not there. Yeah, he go. He played for Florida University. You said he was there with Trey Mann and Keontae Johnson, his former teammate. Oh, Keontae George watched the episode, so he can drop his True. summer league his summer league mixtape. D Mills, what show high? Uh, I think twenty two in an AAU game. Okay. That's what about pretty, for him? That's pretty out? damn good. Uh, probably like ten. Twenty two in AAU. How old? How old is that? Like thirteen? No, I was like a sophomore. That's twenty two. That's a lot. As a sophomore, it's like a forty point game, bro. <laughs> it really is. Because it was only six of us on the court. Like we only wait, had six wait, players. Wait, wait a minute. We only <laughs> had six players. <laughs> oh, see why you dropped twenty two. <laughs> we only had six well, players. Had no. <laughs> right. It was six. We only had six players on our roster that game. Cause I don't know why so you play like the whole game. Yeah, I That's had to. Up. How are you scoring? Um, layups, layups, mid range jumpers. Tang was a point guard at the time. He was. So you got somebody that could corroborate that story. Yeah. Okay. I will call Tang right. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he'll remember exactly ah. what I <laughs> scored, but I did have like twenty two that game, and it ah. was it was funny because it was against a dude that was like six eight, and I was doing my thing. We ain't see him ever Frank, do nothing I need like the, that before. I need the film. I need the film. I think my highest had to be like 17. In high school? Yeah. I, I could probably. That was sophomore year, right? You had yeah. one game sophomore year where I'm like, damn, when the fuck did Mike Actually, learn I how even, to do I think that? Was, then, I think that was like junior varsity, honestly. Oh, well, I don't is, even remember. Because you I had, had a big game right before you hurt your hamstring. Yes, you did. I thought no, Mike was about to break no, out. Yeah, <laughs> I had, yeah. No, I had like 10 points What's and a half, versus? but then that's that's all I finished the with. The literal JV? or Yeah, this I think this was going into JV. Like I was playing with like Larry and them type of thing. Like I think Larry was his senior year. Which Larry? White Larry, black Larry? White Larry. Larry. Okay. Oh, you getting 17 with Larry is kind of, that's not hard. Larry did nothing but shoot. I remember, <laughs> I remember he caught the ball. I was right next to him <laughs> on the wing. He was literally about to shoot, but somebody was closing out so hard. He gave me that. 2K bailout pass right to the side. Did you hit the shot? Uh, I don't even remember if I shot the ball after that. Oh, okay. Uh, so he didn't hit the shot. Larry used to have games where he would have like 20 and a half and then in the game with like 24. Yeah. <laughs> That's because they put play tight on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deny ball. <laughs> I, don't, I always switch the number because I don't really remember, but it was the game where I fucked up my, my shoulder. I remember you were spazzing that I was, game. You had I was a lot of layups. Yeah, it was a lot of layups, but buckets is buckets. This is, was it Argo or Fenton? It, it was, was something. Yeah, it was. Did they yeah. have the, uh, no, that was Argo. They had that carpet. So but they fit. had a weird gym. Yeah, yeah they had fit. a different they gym. They had the dome where like you sit, look yeah, down. Because yeah. yeah. basically what we were doing, we were running that press and we were selling the ball and I was getting layups. It's not like I was at the that pull up mid-range jump shot. It wasn't that like that. Yeah, so both of y'all both had good games and then both got hurt. Yeah, those games. it's a curse. But the funny thing about Mike is that Mr. Mr. Nelson just never played him again after he got hurt. I remember that game that y'all told me where I got hurt. I remember it was halftime, and I hit a buzzer beater, and Matt was like, Mike, you got the most points on the team right now. <laughs> because of that one buzzer beater? I think I had like 10 at the half. Oh. Um, I do remember like when you did come back, watch you on the court, like this motherfucker is not moving the same. <laughs> <laughs> that hamstring really messed you up. And that James Harden shit. <laughs> I had a big After, like, game Chris Paul. against DGS – that we lost. I can't remember how much I had, but I just remember hitting this big clutch ass three. And I I remember watching it in the film room after we lost. And coach was just like, That's a crazy shot, but that's a you know what I'm saying? That's just like a fuck it. That same shit at DGS. In. I came in, hit a three, and then they took me right out. Yeah, I remember Damn, that. Man, coach, I, I take me out. I, you, it was that I took two three. No, I took two threes in like a, in like forty five yeah, seconds. No, he came in, like, I'm gonna get my shot. So. I made one. This was at DGS, right? <laughs> yeah. That, so I remember that part of the game, and some for some reason Nate's name came up in conversation the other day, Nate. and I also remember Nate hitting a three Who in that Nate? same game. Nate um, Overman. Nate Overman. Uh. And I was talking to Suzanne, and I because they went to 
grammar school together, whatever. Uh-oh. And I was like, I have two memories oh, of Nate. They dating. I know exactly <laughs> which memories too. It was that shot with DGS, and that one time he tapped D'Angelo and made D'Angelo <laughs> fall in practice. <laughs> like, D'Angelo oh. got up so fast, like he, he didn't want nobody to see him. But we all seen shifty. Him. He wasn't. Bro. <laughs> he just did a quick, not even a quick change of direction. D'Angelo it was literally, just, you know, that drill where you dribble to one, then you switch hands, you dribble oh, the other yeah, way. Yeah. He, D'Angelo fell on what that. is what is oh, Nate's okay. NBA comp? Nate Walters. No, it was like oh. They got like a Steve Blake. Definitely like yeah, a like Steve, a Steve Blake. Blake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve Blake had game. <laughs> Steve Blake he was, was not a Nate bomb. was the type of dude that didn't turn the ball over. He hit he hit seventy percent of his shots because he didn't take a lot of them. Yeah, but he Fake took the ones. Holes they called wrong. Okay. Yeah, yeah. D'Angelo was one of the most frustrating players to play with. D'Angelo had game because he, he would, just didn't show it a lot. <laughs> For real. But he would have some plays. We'd be like, okay. Yeah. No, he kept facts. telling me he was D1 bound. My best game yeah. ever was against St. Rita. I don't know if it was my highest scoring game. I probably had like 18. I definitely had some 20 point games in my career. We played against this dude, Charles Matthews. He went to Kentucky, transferred to Michigan, went at it. Okay. I see and I had a chase. Eric Dubose, Eric Dubose was there, I think. Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. Aaron Tony was there. Aaron Tony used to be your own. Is he in y'all grade? No, no he's a year no, he's older. Than us. Older. Okay, yeah. Aaron Tony was at that game, um, and I remember I had a big chase down block, and Aaron Tony got up like, yeah, yo, P. <laughs> and I just remember feeling like Braun in that. Game. <laughs> but the crazy thing is, they scored. I yeah. got a chase down block. No, te- none of my teammates ran with me. They, That's they, the worst. And they do got the ball and just laid it up. That was like a, a daily occurrence back in my day. And uh, what? Getting a block and they just score because nobody <laughs> That's else such a play. I just worked yeah. hard, got a chase down block for his teammate to get the block and go right up. And I remember I, w- I was just shooting the fuck out of the, the ball and I I made a three. And coach was, I guess coach wanted to run some plays, but I made a three. And Ontario always reminded me this. I hit it and I did the Jordan shrug to my oh, coach. Oh, hell, he hell like, no. Yeah. Real shit, I call Ontario right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I also remember I, Jerry was still on my team at the time, and I had did a play, and I just dumped it off to Jerry, and I ran back on the defense. I said, "Shoot it!" And he made that bit. I just knew <laughs> we was gonna win that game, but we we end up losing. That was, we we could not beat Saint Rita, but shit. I remember there was a time where y'all had a JV game, and as B team, we had to watch y'all. Wait, uh-huh. like we couldn't leave until y'all game was over. And we were sitting there, and I was like, I started singing a two chain song. I was like, all I do was turn up. And he was like, all your ass need to do is get on a treadmill. Me? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's before y'all was working, like real close. That's crazy. <laughs> he just made that up. No, I swear to God, you said it when you were sitting, you was like sitting on the bench, and you just said that. You turned around, and you just said it. What the fuck? <laughs> Derek was like, you I had been wrong if you were the slams was there. <laughs> yeah, Derek wasn't even big like that in high school. At least I don't remember. You were skinny as hell. And my. And that I remember. When I look back, you was skinny, right? Yeah. Dude, I look back at one of my this? It's like sophomore year? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is before he got into the football. So, yeah. 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 When I look back at all high school pictures, everybody is skinny as fuck. Except for me. I'm I'm fatter. No. I had, your, baby, I had more your baby pictures is well, yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. Even EJ. I looked at EJ old picture when, like, he first started, like, maybe this is third grade basketball. He looks so fucking fat. It is crazy. <laughs> It's just, yeah, yeah, but I can't, yeah, that's random as hell. I must have just been talking shit. Welcome to the offseason, y'all. Welcome to the offseason. We spent 20 minutes t- reminiscing about. Well, it's the drop the mic conversation. Oh, facts. That's no, the great. It's real. Yeah, I, I, I like it. They I love here it. for the X Factors, but my favorite thing is going to be reminiscing. I don't think most people are here for the X Factors because that's just kind of like a we got, going in the wind. We got a lot of ball watchers that watch this. What, yeah. How about this? What's, your, what's, a, what's a memory on a basketball court that you had that another motherfucker wouldn't believe? Um,. Like a like if Derek came in and be like, man, I dunked on somebody. We would be like, boy, get the fuck. But he's like, no, I really dunked on somebody. I don't have a basketball. My, the way I did was scoring layups and floaters. That was all of my points. I'll never forget one of my teammates, Joe George. He threw me a pass. It was like a fast break. Mm-hmm. This is like sophomore year. We were playing in the field house. But he overthrew it, and it was going out of bounds. So I, I caught it, and I threw it at, just at the rim because I couldn't. You know what I'm saying? You just kind of like say yeah. the rim and it, it went was in. a lob. Oh, I thought it you was, I thought you like inadvertently threw a lob to someone and no, they called hell it. Hell no. <laughs> he just like, he was trying to give me a go ahead pass. Yeah. But I like, uh, and, uh, and that motherfucker went in. I and I remember going to school the next day and his brother Phil was like, 
yo, Joe told me you hear some crazy shit yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah. I don't got no shit crazy that I did, but I just know that we had one game that the other team had 56 points and two players probably had like 50. Oh, yeah. Is that at Morton? Yeah, that, that was, was at Morton. our place. It was against more. I think it was against, was against more. They had two people. Exactly then they were. About. They were all. They just scored all the this points. This against. This is against y'all. Or you just saying our yeah. school. No, this is no. This against us. Yeah. What the hell? Then we had to play more for the conference championship. I don't, I don't remember. remember. I just know that. I know that one dude. Because we, yeah. we were the first. <laughs> like five three. three. He played with one. He played with Greg. I did that's what we're talking about, right? I think that's what we're talking about. How Greg was like on first? No, 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 no. On varsity for like. We were talking about the game. We went to Harvard. There's a dude in our grade at Morton yeah, that went to Harvard. Yeah. Wall of Perez, I think. Yeah. yeah. It was like he, he, he played like there? A, yeah. Yeah, he, it's that bunch of brothers. <laughs> yeah, that no, he to, didn't get it academically. Well, probably both, but he was a hooper. That's, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, you got to be more <laughs> academic to still get <laughs> yeah. in there. Yeah, Morton had some shit. Do y'all remember that white guard? Marcel at, at Harvard on a hoop scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> white <laughs> guard at Morton. Y'all didn't play against him. He he was like. Actually, the game, our so- one of our sophomore year games at Morton is on YouTube. You can search it up. Y'all wasn't in high school yet. Never mind. Oh. You can see us. I, I remember that game. I, I, drew a a fall, uh, I drew a foul. It's on YouTube. Go find it. Morton what? versus Hensdale South High School. 2000, that would be 2012, 2011. Something like is that. Is it the whole game? Yeah, yeah. whole game. Yeah. Oh, I, wow. I, I think when I first found out about that, I went to that clip just to see me. And literally, I just got an offensive rebound and got a foul. And I think I missed. I might have missed both for you. I, I think I made one. Yeah, go find it. And, and then send it to us on Twitter. So it, with the highlights. Put together, um, I don't. I didn't play. I, you ain't got to look for my highlights. I didn't play. <laughs> but Derek and Mike probably played that game. I don't remember. Um, y'all want to talk about the Toronto Raptors getting sued by the New York Knicks? Stop playing with us. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about it. Red ass. The loss. Oh, so let's start <laughs> off with the New York Knicks are suing the Toronto Raptors as well as their parent company, the Maple Leaf Sport Entertainment, mm-hmm. alleging that the former Nick, uh, former Nick employee who joined the Raptors this summer stole preparatory uh, information, proprietary. proprietary information, and took it with him to his new job. Um, basically, the dude worked for the Knicks, found out that he got a job for the Toronto Raptors, and started to send those work emails to his personal emails. Oh wow! And he made in a this account, <laughs> yeah, in this, um, there were three thousand files, films, and data, including three thousand three hundred and fifty-eight video files. The Knicks uh, discovered the transfer on August fifteenth. And yada yada yada. Um, the most fun part about this, though, or maybe it's not fun, uh, if you're a Toronto Raptors fan, is this excerpt from the the article that says, as a first time head coach, the defendant who is what is his name? I don't know. Darko. How to pronounce it. Darko. We just gonna call him Darko. Darko. Darko would be expected to bring his own organizational structure and coaching me- method. Apparently, given his non traditional path to he- a head coaching job, the defendant did not have his own. <laughs> So he chose to exploit the Knicks method. He got the job without having any idea how to run anything. He said, you know, the Knicks got, we taking that shit. And now they're going to court and now everybody might get fired. Darko might not be the head coach of the Toronto Raptors this season. He got the job a month ago. That's kind of crazy to think Crazy, bro. Crazy. There's a lot of shit going on in the NBA, but this is, yeah, this is the craziest one. This is, this is literally stupid. First of all, the Toronto Raptors ain't that far off from the, like from like being able to compete. They bust our ass, I believe, in Madison. What, what, why do they need this information? I was going to say, what did they gain? Yeah. <laughs> this is just a what did they nonsense. gain? Well, it's really just like, I mean, I'm guessing they just, Darko didn't really have shit. He don't, we talked about when he got the job. That he's a forty-year-old coach that's been coaching for thirty, years. Yeah. <laughs> coaching for thirty years, <laughs> mostly as an assistant and stuff. And I remember um, listening to some podcasts after he got uh, got got the job from so Toronto Raptors podcast, trying to figure out what the field is for him. And a lot of people are like, man, he's an offensive uh, mastermind. You know, he's the guy that formulated this in in Memphis, and then this in his previous stop with the Suns, if I'm not mistaken. And people really believe that that's who he was. And now this is saying like maybe. He ain't got that juice like that. If he's going to the – like, the Knicks were a really good offensive team last season, do not get me wrong, but it's the fucking Knicks. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It ain't It ain't like the Knicks are some powerhouse. And it's what, not I, like y'all running some super high-level triangle offense on steroids. It was like Jalen Brunson, do something, please. <laughs> Julius Randle, hit some crazy step-back three, please. Uh, but, yeah, this is one of the crazier, like, under-the-radar, under the I want to say, because I don't think most NBA fans really give a damn. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, what? how does this impact me? You might see a full flush in the Toronto Raptors organization as far as that coaching staff. That's actually kind of crazy. For I me. would if yeah. I if I was a GM, if I was 
Masai or if I was was he in on it? The owner, I'm cleaning house. Y'all all have to go. This is so stupid. This is so avoidable. We did not need this at all. We trying to keep players. We trying to make sure we maintain Pascal. And y'all doing this. Y'all trying to copy the Knicks who ass we bust. Yeah, we wasn't as good, but like, what the hell are we doing? And it's kind of like, it's, you, it's an organization that just came from that Nick Nurse thing where they, he was talking about, hey, good luck with those guys. Mm-hmm. You now sure. get a new coach in there. You expect a new fresh, clean slate. Then you get hit with this. And it's kind of like, damn, can we just have a good, consistent year of just no bullshit? And that's just because <laughs> if I'm a player and you're trying to teach me some shit that you got from somebody else, I'm not even gonna respect you. Hey, look, this was, hey, Pascal, come here. We so watch this is what Julius is doing. Yeah, this is Julius <laughs> be doing. Julie, when Julius get when Julius get right here, he's spin. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a perfect for you, so you can spin. But yeah. I want you to do it like him. I, I see a lot. I see a lot to, of Julius in your game. You got Pascal that same just coming spin. to next season shooting with his left hand because he's been watching too right. much Julius Randle. OG, let me show you what RJ do right here. <laughs> <laughs> They they in that like boy what? If you don't get the f- out my face, and the shooter's trying to body people like Jalen Brunson. Right, he just he just in, <laughs> he in a post. Up. <laughs> yeah, he just posting up guards all of a sudden. Stop. He's still in offense from Tom Thibodeau. That's that's ridiculous to think about. Fucking Tom Thibodeau. And Tom Thibodeau never even has like a crazy offense. <laughs> never. No, <laughs> this was like his best offensive team. Yeah, yeah. His defense now, if I, and now if it was a defensive schemes. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that's that's some of you want to steal from. Yeah, but most even, people have stole from him since two thousand eight. Even that though, I just I just think that good coaches they work with what they got. Yeah, I could take Tom Thibodeau shit, but if I don't got the players to fit it, yeah. and if you can't get them boys to play thirty eight minutes, yeah. <laughs> but no, Nick Nurse had the boys playing, so they he should, definitely yeah. had a that's seven true, man rotation. True. Um, uh, breaking news: James Harden, the NBA was yeah. is finding superstar James Harden a hundred thousand dollars for his recent comments about Daryl Morey. James Harden, like, that's it. I'll say it again. <laughs> so it turns out that the, what he was saying was a lie, wasn't a lie. Is that why they're finding him? Because he said that they were investigating what he claimed was a lie. Like him. Yeah. yeah. They James they, Harden told them that the lie was when he signed the when player he opted option, in, yeah. That he was going to be traded immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they just find him for saying it publicly. Oh, I so think that's what the fine comes from. It's not from the investigation. For, it's for his comments in okay. China. Yeah. Um, this is not really news. Uh, or maybe it is. Chicago Bulls point guard Lonzo Ball talks about how he feels bad for the Bulls front office because he felt as they made the perfect team around him. How, how do how do we how do we feel? First of all, this is the first time we really heard Lonzo talk at all over the yeah. last two years. And I haven't had a chance to watch the entire interview yet. Um, but any of y'all tune in to some of it? I saw some. I saw the clip outside of that comment. Um, but I do agree. Like we never did get to see the forward. We saw for half a season. Um, and when they when he was there, they were the number one seed. When he leaves, the team just drops defensively, and he was such a big, big intricate part of the three point shooting. He was shooting the ball crazy. So it's just yeah, he never really got to see it all. Yeah, I agree with him. Um, I seen the clip, uh, the actual video of the clip, and. Um, he was just saying how, you know, he was able to finally find the perfect fit for himself throughout his career. You know how it was in L.A. Pelicans was cool, but the Bulls just seemed perfect for what he likes to do and how his game was uh, evolving. And, yeah, for them to have had such some, so much success and this to happen. And um, that he was talking about the day by day, you know what I'm saying? Like the type of injury he has, he does. He literally didn't know what to expect. The next day to Tuesday, man, he feel good. I have a workout Wednesday. Oh, shit. I can't walk Thursday. Damn, I can work out again. Like so the day by day process in itself, he was saying people don't really understand. You just see the injury like, oh, lines are going to miss the year. But it's like the day by day, you know, hurdles men- mentally. And that, that part make you feel bad. Um, That. That's just tough. Yeah, because this a, was the Bulls a, version of Lonzo. But this is a dude that y'all was saying should be in the G League. And to see him <laughs> overcome all of that. <laughs> nah, it's yeah. It just sucks. Like, injuries suck. <laughs> Hold on, let d Neal say what he was saying. I just wanted to cut him off just to be ass. No, nah, I was just saying that this was like the most, this was one of the more fun Bulls teams to watch when he was at his peak with his powers. But, yeah. Because him and Caruso was a crazy defensive duo, bro. I saw some conversation on Twitter, like, who has a better defensive backcourt? I think it was from Matt Issa. 
Derek White and Marcus Smart or Lonzo Ball and Alice Caruso? I was saying Lonzo and Caruso. Lonzo and Caruso. I thought they they had the statistics with it too. Huh? Did they have statistics? No, I was just just asking what people thought. I mean, I'm biased. You know what my mind was. I didn't reply to the tweet, but I was like, I. I feel pretty confident about Alex Caruso and, and Lonzo Ball being the better. Derek White and Marcus Smart because they actually played and defended people. <laughs> yeah. Lonzo going, it sucks. I, I hope, just wanted to say that. Yeah. I hope this isn't like. Lonzo taller and bigger though. Yeah. So I, t- I think they're more, dis- collectively they're more disruptive, causing yeah. a lot more turnovers. I, I feel like Derek White, he has like the ability to defend wings, but I don't think he has the ability to, at the same level as like uh, Alex Caruso or Lonzo Ball. They got a little He's bit more size. He's better defender than them though. Last year he was not over, <laughs> not over, not over Caruso. Caruso. Caruso's the number one. Caruso got to play. What you Y'all mean? He has to be injured. He played like sixty some games last year. That would qualify. Sixty some would qualify. Yeah. Sixty five. Sixty five. I thought it was sixty two. Sixty five. Sixty five is a lot. He logged some. He logged some games at power four. That's got to count for an extra couple. True. He was guarding. Um, he was guarding in the playoffs. In the playoffs. <laughs> and I'm guarding Braun. <laughs> Doing his thing. We won both of those games. Former Lakers. Both of them. I don't know. It's going, who's the next Laker that's going to be a bull? Don't just, say Anthony Davis. It's going to be Austin Reeves in four years. Oh. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be the same same cycle. Um, but no, Anthony Davis is probably the better option when he's 38. D'Angelo going to come to Chicago. Well, DeMar DeRozan. Send it in. We, oh, he'll take him. We also want Cole Swindler. He don't play for them no more. Three team it. He played for the Bucks or some shit. I think. Oh, we don't yeah, want them no do. more. We don't want the Milwaukee left. All right, so the last thing is not even a story. But I had some fun with the Fanspo trade machine. All right. Uh, Bill Simmons came back to podcasting after five weeks of being away. And I, though I have not listened, it did go pretty viral, an idea that he had. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Um you wonder if Dame is watching Minnesota going, you know what? Me for Towns just <laughs> – I'm sorry. Because I'm I'm hearing it in his voice. Just switch us. We got to go bear. We have Edwards. Me and Ant together, uh, maybe that's a better situation than me and anywhere else. How, first of all, off rip, how do y'all feel about that before we get into the hypothetical fake trade that makes this happen? Uh, Portland says this, no. Yeah, Portland says no because they want draft picks. My, I mean, not Miami. Um Minnesota just traded all their draft picks for Rudy Gobert. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. So, so here's the trade to make it happen. Who's the third team? Who's the third and fourth team, Derek? Lock, lock in and listen to what I'm saying. Okay? I hate these type of trades. <laughs> lock in and listen to what I'm saying. So the Trailblazers are trading Damian Lillard, and they are receiving Tim Hardaway Jr., Rashawn Holmes, Derek Lively, two first-round picks from the Dallas Mavericks, two first-round picks from the Minnesota Timberwolves, and two second-round picks from the Chicago Bulls. So that trade package is Derek Lively and four first-round picks. You can and protect it anyway, whatever. I'm not here to add protections or whatever the fuck y'all talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. You're not the GM. The Timberwolves walk away with Damian Lillard and the remainder of Alonzo Ball's contract. Okay, okay so they, they eat up Alonzo's cap. Oh. The Dallas Mavericks receive Carl Anthony contract. Towns. Contract, Okay. And the Chicago Bulls walk out with Mike Conley. You ain't saying nothing wrong. Just eating up, eating up. Okay. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, they eat up Lonzo's cap. <laughs> 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 but uh, I don't. That's not a bad. I like. I like it for Dallas too. I think everybody Dallas comes out of there with cap. I just. <clears throat> I don't know how the Blazers feel. I think they feel about walking away with just Derek Lively. Derek, and the, the first oh, yeah, the draft capital yeah. sounds good. I feel like it's just. With Damian Lillard, there's got to be. I feel like they're looking for something. A little I think. Bit more. I think Josh Green would be included in that deal. I agree. Ooh. I agree. With if that. it was Josh Green, yeah, I'm perking my ears. I think you need. I think you them. need more young. The contracts are the same between him and Derek Lively. Would you rather have? Oh, you saying you need him you as need, well? You might need both. Are you sacrificing a first round pick to make that happen, or you want all of the four first round picks plus those? If I'm the Blazers, if you're, the I would Blazers. sacrifice a first round pick. To yeah, take at that Josh point, Green. we have like I'll take the pick. We have like. Tw- 10, 12 young people. This like, point, we can't develop all these first round that's, picks. That's the point. But the also a point is that Josh Green is, what, 24? And by mm-hmm. the time y'all are going to be really good and competitive again, he might be at, what, 28? Yeah. So it's like a, maybe you should just take the first round pick I'll that might pick. be better than For Josh that Green. that reason, and also because we have Shaden Sharp, uh, Anthony Simons, we got Scoot. And I feel like there's somebody else I'm forgetting, but 
I they have like are you talking about like the wings? Or are you talking about Th- those are just three guards right there? Yeah, yeah. Shaden Sharp is gonna have to play wings. Yeah, he's gonna have to. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he's a wing. I, um, yeah, you brought back Matisse Thybul. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying y'all are happy about Matisse Thybul, but they really put their neck on the line to go bring him back. Mm-hmm. Um, is your little? Is your little? So it's like, I just give me my pick. Yeah, I like Josh Green, but I'm not looking at him as somebody that would save the Blazers. So at that point. I'll take Derek Lively and all my fucking picks, and then I can just do what I need to do. Yeah, and also the Blazers don't have any centers in their developmental pool. It's just all guards. So yeah. it would be nice to have Derek Lively. It would be. Derek Lively, School Henderson, pick a roll. Yeah, that sounds nice. crazy. Does Cat do it for the Mavericks? Like, as in what? Like, they, they like do what? Does he bring what they need? <sighs> Not from Jason the defensive Kidd being standpoint. a defensive coach and having – Hard the motherfucker end up like Christian they Wood. Have Maxie. They, they wouldn't have any wings, though, That's except for Josh Green. That's the downside. It would be thing. Josh Green and Maxie Cleaver. But they were the wings before. So we, they traded away Tim Hardaway Jr. That'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> and when Tim Hardaway shoot, Jr. shoots 50% from three, they win games. All he got to do is hit one or two. They, got Seth did they still got Seth Curry. It's the Clippers. Then he stopped doing it, and they lost the series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do got Seth. He's Seth Curry wing, is yeah, shorter yeah. than you two. It's not a wing. I guess, yeah. That motherfucker looking look Mike eye to eye. Time for Luca to, to be able to guard. Be that small forward. <laughs> Luca guard. <laughs> That's all that mean. All right, let's yeah. get into the, these X factors. Um, 76ers. All right, talk about the 76ers. What is the X factor of a team that we don't know what the hell Kyrie's going on? Kyrie's Maxi. Hmm. Because we're preparing for James Harden to no longer be there, and I feel like this is unfair, but we need Maxi to take an even bigger step. And it feels like a guy who's already overexceeded um, everything that he was drafted to be as a late first round pick in the 20s, if not 20, I can't remember, it was 20 or 21 he was. Um, and I feel like he got him better every year and he's taken very, very big steps and has been a big part of the team. But with this James Harden situation, they're going to need him to take an even bigger step to make Joel and B feel secure uh, mm-hmm. and staying with his team. Because if this Harden mess gets too explosive and gets too messy and Harden has to go one way or another. This team, no matter how you feel about Harden, they become more weaker. And Tobias is on the last year of his deal. So it, it could be a lot of turnaround coming very soon for Joel Embiid already with another new coach. Um, you got all of this negative uh, shit in the air and negative uh, publicity around the team, and they're not as good. And shit, last year they didn't even really do shit then either. They ain't like this team that has, you know – gotten close they they have a, a a ceiling that they can't really get past and um he's thinking championships but i don't know how you can think about championships when they can't get past the second round so um the writing is on the wall and i'm not saying it as a nick fan because we wanted the team's link but if i'm the 76ers my main thing is this guy cannot he can't go we can't be known as a team who did the trust the process with sam hinky and we Traded for Markel Fultz instead of Jason Tatum. Mm -hmm. We had Ben Simmons. That turned out to be completely shitty. This is a generation, supposed to be a generation of talent who, under our development, never shot threes. We allowed it to the point where it handicapped the fuck out of this young man. Joel Embiid went from being injury prone to an MVP. um, And we were able to get him James Harden, Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler, all of these guys. And it, it, it turned into it didn't even turn into a conference final appearance. Mm-hmm. You cannot be the organization known for that. That is that is horrible. Especially when you think about the process being a 12 win team, 15 win team, mm-hmm. 10 win team. Like those fan, that fan base went through five years of dog shit basketball to get. I mean, when you think about it on paper, Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, I mean, the best version of him. And the Marco Fultz one sucks because they traded away Tate for sure. to make that happen. But like, in theory, Dario Saric, things things should have worked out. Jeremy yeah. Grant, a lot of good names came from the trust. The pro- they may not be the face of the league, but mm-hmm. some good names came. And and then we're not even we're not even mentioning the misses. We're not mentioning Nerlens Noel, Jaleel Okafor. Yeah, we we not even mi- mentioning that shit. If you want to get real real technical, but this team found Robert Covington. Yep. This is a, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people came from this. TJ I McConnell. remember when uh Robert Cut- Robert Covington first got into 2K, my man's had no face, no face skin. skin. No yeah. face skin at all. Like, I think he had, like, DJ Banger's face skin on him. Motherfucker came from Proviso West. Yeah, right yeah. down the and street. And I never knew. Tennessee State and shit. But, like, 
I don't. I, I just think that like. Do y'all remember during the uh, Atlanta All Star year? Uh huh. He showed up. They sh- they brought Robert Covington <laughs> to be in the Skills Challenge yeah. because oh, he went yeah. to a HBCU. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> the man got a trip to Atlanta to lose in the first round and dipped. That shit is crazy. <laughs> put on for his city. I guess so. I guess I, so. I put uh, Joel and B for the X Factor for all the Damn. reasons. I, I, cause I didn't go for more so court reasons. I go went for more so like how is he gonna kind of respond and cope with whatever happens with James Harden? Cause you know it is on him. I I did agree with you about the Tyrese Maxi and him playing like a part of it when Ben Simmons was missing a lot of time. I think he basically sat out like the first part of the season before he got traded. Tyrese Maxey was running point guard, and I thought he was doing pretty damn good at it, too. But especially now with that addition of Patrick Beverly, he don't got to do all that. He can kind of focus on his corn, too. Uh, Did y'all yeah. see um, another fold that I want to add to this? Do y'all watch Gilbert Arenas? Show? No. Uh, I, I watched a clip. I was on TikToks and stuff like that. I love his show. He has one of the best shows. Um, he recently had Evan Turner and Andre Iguodala, who, uh, coincidentally, former 76ers. And they were just spilling some teas about the Philadelphia 76ers in different ways and certain things. Uh, Evan Turner was just talking about, like, early in his career, there was people trying to pin him and Eagle Dollar against each other. Oh, wow. Because he was coming in as a new guy. They were trying to find a way to push Eagle Dollar out. So you got certain people telling him not to listen. You, hey, don't listen to that guy. Blah, blah, blah. He's just re- whatever. And eventually... They became like this, mm-hmm. but at first, you know, they, they, he was a rookie. He was a vet. They I really said they was young. You know, what so, regime is that? Is that the Colangelo regime? Uh, it has to be right. This is Drew Holiday. This is okay. Thaddeus Young, right, Thaddeus Young. Okay. Turner, uh, Elton Brand, and I found that very interesting. Was Spencer Hall on that team? Yes, um, one of the years at least. And uh, Evan Turner I mean, and Andre Iguodala said something where it was like he was like as a young guy. There's so much shit about the NBA that you're so naive to. He was like, for example, when you first come into the NBA, you don't realize that your organization can determine the type of season you have. So, for example, if you don't take an extension and they like, because they were using the example of something. Somebody had an extension and they were saying he's going to, he was, he's, it seems like he's getting pushed out the league. Uh, I can't remember the name, but it's like you have an extension, but you want to bet on yourself. They you were cut just your minutes so you don't yes, get the money. Touches, oh. then now your production go down. They like look, you know what I'm saying? We were trying to get an extension. Now, uh, you know what I'm saying? And now it can yeah. fu- it can fuck up your life. I could see that. Yeah, you, That's, you, that actually seems like it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so I I just found that that was very interesting on a topic of the Philadelphia 76ers. Like, if if this if this shit don't blow up for the better, or they find a way to you know, catapult in the right direction out of this James Harden shit, the Philadelphia 76ers are going to be a very historically badly ran organization. Because yeah, at some of, point you can't keep blaming it all. And I, don't, I say that no, no, yeah. with no hard feelings because they have an amazing fan base that goes crazy, that does deserve, you know, love. But as far as how the team is being ran, which I have to put out there because fans are so sensitive, everything ain't about you fucking fans. Um, but just – how they're being ran is kind of crazy. They're a case study in the tank it until you make it type shit. It's like the f- one of the first real teams to go through that for years and years at a time to get the high draft capital and draft. And a lot of the times they went with what they deemed to be the best talent and not fit. And sometimes that meant drafting three centers in a four-year <laughs> span, you know? <laughs> And uh, it, it it's definitely interesting. I mean, there is a world still where James reports, and I'm not going to say that it's all sunshine and roses, but they could still be back to like a 50-win team, just kind of pushing the can down the street, trying to figure out, okay, don't we don't have know, to deal with know. it now. I just don't know, as an organization, if I want to play with a disgruntled James Harden. You're just not going to get the full version of him. I, I'm somewhere in the middle where I agree with KB is where he comes back, and then I'm also agree with shooting. Not that they wouldn't want to play with him, but we've seen unmotivated James Harden. The yeah, production sure. is it's literally not the, same. not the same to make me feel like you will still be a 50-win team unless Joel Embiid is an MVP again and Tyrese Maxey takes a step. I wouldn't go into there even if he came back. James Harden has literally showed us on the floor what he looks like when he has no desire to be there, and it is not good. Mm-hmm. It's not good, bro. I was more so yeah. thinking that they just have – 
until they figure it out, regardless if he's on the floor or whatever he's got going on, I feel like they have enough at least, especially if Joel Embiid's involved and he's all bought in. They can just they can find their way into the playoffs until they resolve a trade. Yeah, my biggest X factor was Tobias Harris. I think Tobias Harris could have a great season next year. He had a good season last year, but without James Harden, obviously I think his usage rate goes Uh-oh. up a little bit. So I think his expectations PPG might and go. Expectations for Tobias Harris from you? No, I just think that he could be he had a very good year last now year. Now if he don't ball, now if he don't be nah. at that, that level two, level three option. I think he'll if he, if he if he if he's the same player he was last year, he's still a very good basketball player. Okay, okay. That's a character arc for That's Derek. growth. That's growth. Um but it's when just, I was saying this to him, I was an issue. <laughs> you see why you should, you see why Tobias well, Harris. Well you know it's the last of his deal, so now his expectations change. Uh, but I but I'm just saying <laughs> it's different from ass. Yeah, he for was sure. Calling a man ass. Sure. And that <laughs> ass is like, bro. I put in, uh, the Robert Sacre highlights into the Twitter oh, chat. Oh no, that's what you call ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know what's funny? I had looked him up after that. I was like, did Robert Sacre ever get another deal after that? He said he only got one contract. Yeah, no, no. The last pick in the draft. What college you went to? Why? No. Mm. I don't know why. I they produce not. a lot of NBA talent lately. You, not a big school, but they produce a lot of random. You probably don't even know where it's located, but it's a big school. But it's a big school. It's a big basketball school. Random. You probably don't know where it's at. So oh, when man. I say that, it's not a blue blood. It's not a yeah. Duke. It's yeah. not. A, it's random. But they produce a lot of NBA talent very recently as well too. And you man. probably don't know where it's at. They Fre- win thirty. Ga- they win almost thirty games a year. They might not win a championship. Fresno State. Gonzaga. Gonzaga. I was oh. going to say Gonzaga, but I, I didn't want to feel stupid. Gonzaga's Fresno in, uh, State. I don't know. I could have swore I remember seeing Washington? Gonzaga on there. I don't know where the fuck Gonzaga's at. On uh, like his little it's 2K like player card. Coast, Gonzaga, yeah. Um, but there's still a world where, like, you have to figure out, before we transition away from the 76ers, who do you trust more to, like, hold out James or Daryl Morey? And that's going to determine his next two months. Because if it's Daryl, then James has no real... Oh, other option but to report. For sure. My 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 bet is there. But my part of that is still I've seen it James it? Harden right. have to report. Yeah. And I've seen him go through the motions. I've seen him let a loose ball roll all the way down to the opponent's yeah, other side of the crazy. floor. I forgot that. Floor. <laughs> I've seen him oh, go man. out there and look like he put on 30 pounds in two days. I've <laughs> seen it. Yeah. So, like, Daryl Moore can hold out all the fuck he want. James Harden can report. James Harden has showed us he's not – a player where it's like, oh, I'm going to report and put on my best effort. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. I'm Marshawn Lynch. I'm here because I have to be. <laughs> yeah. I'm literally here so I don't get fined. I'm li- yeah. that's and, that, and that's just that. And then the toughest part for the Philadelphia 76ers is that they've had so much success that, like, to your point, Mike, making the playoffs ain't it. Yeah. They've had – they've done it already. They've made the playoffs probably the majority of the years this last decade. I that's, think Joel Embiid is – he's he's happy to make the playoffs, obviously, but – He's he just won his MVP for the first time. He is happy and he is thirsty to get to the taste of the NBA finals you look at the, and or conference base. finals. At M- least. Fan base. You look yeah. at the top. Bro, if they get to like the first week and James Harden, you could tell like on the court he really not the who more bogus for not just making it happen. Is it for like James Harden reporting that way or is it for there are more not trading them? Yeah, because I'm on one side. That's do you want to? Yeah. Yeah, I ball. wouldn't even want to have that around my life. That's not even fair for the rest of the team to have that. Yeah, you sure. know, but that's why the GM job is hard for Daryl Moore because right. yeah, Daryl Moore don't want that. But he also can't get his man up for nothing because he has a team that he has to build around Joel and B. So I understand his point. I understand both sides. I'm not on anybody's side. You know what I mean? I might be a little bit on Harden's side if Daryl Morey lied about hooking him, him up. The man and trading him immediately, yeah. I don't think that's a lie. I think James Harden told them, him that because he had to tell the NBA something because mm-hmm. of the investigation. The mm-hmm. lie is, I took that pay cut for y'all. Like, Harden me feel like Harden going to treat y'all, this shit like, he can't, yeah, he But can't I don't think that. he can say that because it's like under the table shit. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he's just saying, no, nah, no. Nah. When I said he was a lie, it's because I wanted to be traded. But in reality, I think the the truth is it was some on the table shit that they, he can't. It's you just like say. if I sell weed and you rob me, I can't go to the police. And be like, he, he robbed he me ro- for my weed. That I was selling. Yeah, man, what the fuck? <laughs> He 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 took my uh, bricks of cocaine. Can y'all get? Can y'all? They gonna be like, wait, 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 hold. It's the same thing in NBA. I don't think he can go and be like, man, he we made a deal under the table against y'all rules, and he didn't give me my money. Does so, Daryl stick around if Joel requests a trade as well? I don't think so. Daryl Boris said he doing magic shot. Nah, ain't no way. He going back to Houston. <laughs> hey. 
No, you remember he left Houston soon as James requested a trade. He said he's going to spend time with he, family. Then he, he got a job three months later. He, he didn't know how good he had it. He yeah. was sitting over there shaping up. If he went he back really to Houston, I guess that confirms James Harden would never be Why back Why would they want him back? They're doing fine. Yeah. Raphael, Raphael Stone, Stone is doing yeah. okay. If I'm not, I'm like. Only thing they're going to do is trade all the young players to be competitive right now. <laughs> that's the that's <laughs> MO. Trade draft capital. What is that? The fuck I need that for? Trade that away. All right, what's the second team? Uh, let's do Celtics. Uh, for the Celtics, I put, huh? If you're going to order, anything. I wasn't going to. Any oh, uh, for the Celtics, I put Porzingis' health um, in his foot. Um, hopefully, this isn't a lingering injury that they had to go through for the most of the season. Because for them to trade for him, give, give up Marcus Smart in order to get him, he's supposed to be a big intricate part of this team. If he can't, if that foot ain't as healthy as it should be, it's gonna be a long year for them. I went with uh, Derek White. I think he just kind of like. After the departure of Marcus Smart, he's gonna have to replace some of those shoes. Obviously, like he's got the defense. What the hell is this? <laughs> it's fucking he's sit on it. <laughs> no, nah, because I my so phone is normal. My him. phone buzzed and his phone buzzed. So I thought it was like some notification. Then it started ringing. It was spam. Risk. Don't let me find out you can do it on stream. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the sub. His ass start vibrating. Thanks for the sub. <laughs> he tell me, he tell me. <laughs> uh, no, but the defense is there. I think he just kind of gotta like. Replace a little bit of the shoes that Marcus Marhead did. I remember he did a lot of good, like, playmaking, a lot of just distributing the ball back in San Antonio when DeJounte was out. Uh, as times he would look like he was getting more people involved than he was looking to score. So I'm looking to see him have a bigger season, too. Yeah, he's cool. a Derek, Derek White. White. That's yeah. funny. My, mine is both y'all answers. Derek White slash Przingis. Przingis play at the level I think he can. This team is unfuckwittable. But yeah. he has to be healthy. Uh, and then Derek White. He has to be able to have some guard play for them. Somebody got to pass the damn ball. shots, and he also has to come with that he same. Shot, he shot nearly 40% from three. Yeah, yeah, one of his best three-point shooter seasons of his career. Of defense. That's the thing about shooting, though. Shooting coming for certain yeah. guys, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, Derek White was a big reason why the organization felt comfortable trading their heart and soul. Yeah. So if he comes out, he flops in that organization, and they're like, damn. Yeah, somebody's got to. Trade Marcus Smart for that. Yeah, One they of the guys they got to cheer to uh, Marcus Smart back when he uh, come back. To, uh, Absolutely, Boston, oh, yeah, yeah. Right? He's there's no bad video blood. Standing he's ovation. Get an ovation. That's gonna be a, a nice yeah. moment because sure. he he didn't even know. I don't even think he was he was probably surprised by the damn trade. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think we all was like, wait, Marcus Smart. Yeah, forty eight hours before it was Malcolm Brogdon out the door, and now it's Marcus Smart out the door. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I also went with Derek White for all the reasons y'all said. It's a team that. On surface level, it's going to lack a lot of playmaking, and they need somebody to step up and be that guy to do that. And it's probably going to be Derek White. It's probably going to be it Jason might be Tatum. Tatum yeah. mm-hmm. um, but Derek White is probably going to hold a good majority of that. Yeah. I For the people out there that's kind of doing it with us, and they have like my X Factor is Jason Tatum. Is that wrong to say? Cause nope. You know, I feel like that playmaker is kind of on him too. Yes. Him and Jalen Brown with those I was turnovers. I'm going to say Jalen Brown a little bit yeah. more because Jalen ah. Brown's assist to turnover ratio is one. For every assist he gets, he turned that bitch over. Jason Tatum at least got higher than one. Like, he has showed that he can make play, like, make reads and make plays. Mm -hmm. Jalen Brown doesn't do that nearly as often. And as a guy that is your secondary option, typically you want him to be at least a plus playmaker. He ain't got to be Chris Paul. He ain't got to be Draymond Green. But he needs to at least be decent at that. And and, uh, Jalen Brown hasn't showed that yet in his career. This opinion-based, so nobody's technically wrong. But if you have the best players, the X Factor, I I can't see that. Because usually the best player, we know what we're getting from him. Mm Mm-hmm. So if somebody said yeah. Jason Tatum, I would say uh, I, I wouldn't understand that answer. Yeah, because you already know. It could what be you're J- Jason Tatum's development of a specific skill. Mm-hmm. But is that if he doesn't develop that skill, it just, could be detrimental to the team in some cases. Yeah, I I would say the same like if they thing. say Tatum, you are a playmaker, and he doesn't improve as a playmaker, then the team is objectively not going to be as good as it should be. I if, guess if they're given yeah. the keys to him to start running offenses and he doesn't develop that part of his game, then they're probably not going to be very. But good. also the Warriors, like, the Warriors, he was turning like that. Turnovers was a big part of them against the Warriors too, and just kind of like shot selection. And too, obviously he he messed up his ankle, but they had a hell of turnovers uh, turnovers against the Heat and stuff like that. And you obviously not going to win like you yeah. can't win like that all the time. But I, I also think some of that is you got to also look how some of that is predicated because it's like. How we just talked about with Jay, with Jalen Brown, mm-hmm. if you got that, right? We saw we saw how much he was turning the ball over, and you have so many other guys who aren't contributing to that. 
that's just because that's just tough to throw on Tatum. Yeah, that's you what got I'm you got to be our leading scorer. You got to be a wing defender, and you also now have to be the assist man. Welcome to superstar. That, that was no, I'm not. I'm I'm talking about the previous. He was he's a superstar. Got to be the assist man. I think it's just got to be you got to take care of the ball. Like it's times where he's going to the rim, or I think he had times where didn't he have some times where he had traveled. I think so because he had got caught up in a yeah, possession. Yeah. He tried to do. Like those type of game, things, you yeah. gotta lose, you gotta tighten up a little bit. No, but that's more sure. so just but growth. There, but there's also superstars mm-hmm. who do that and still have success because, like, he's not gonna ever play the perfect game. For sure. So it's like, well, it's put, also about team building, right? So like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. That's going to my point, where it's like, you, yeah, you. I mean, you can throw it all on him, but is that realistic? Because it's like this is also the dude that you want to make shots down the stretch, and if he's doing all of these things, he becomes easier to guard. The Warriors' entire plan was like, "Hey, that motherfucker ain't beating us. Now what? <laughs> oh, Jalen Brown is y'all next option. Send him left. Oh, Al Horford <laughs> shooting threes will live. Marcus Smart shooting threes will live. And that and the series is done there because it's like he has the ball. He's y'all playmaker. You're putting him at the top of the floor. He's the he's so I easy to I guard. I would be like mad that. at Al Horford being X Factor. That's too. so easy to guard like that. Can so you it's replicate like replicate the, the last season. That, he, that, he's a shooter. I, mean, offense, I ain't see too much shooting. That shoot. offense ain't shit, bro. Or shot that making. Ain't shit. And I feel like also running and orchestrating offense, it takes time to learn how to do that. You just can't go into one year and be like, oh, yeah, this is your job and expect but you to be great. But you know what? I, I would say he has got like significantly better every single season. Yes. That this is maybe like year. their year, like, okay, we know he can do it even better this year. And that nobody's expecting Jason Tatum to turn into Jason Kidd, right? But, right. like, they just want him to be an extra additional playmaker, especially since they traded their best playmaker away. No, for for sure. I, I just think it, it it limits them. Well, I mean, the Przingis trade helps a lot. But for Jason Tatum to be the player that they're going to need, in my opinion, having him be that type, play that type of role, how they've had him play, it just it just limits them. I'm not saying he can't be a playmaker or, you know, can't make decisions. But him at the top, how they did. I'm just thinking about the Warriors because they did it the best. The Heat was just being physical like they did with every team they played against. Um, and they were just a really good defensive team because they can switch everything with Bam. But I, I can just remember him being at the top of the key. And that's just so easy for the defense, especially mm-hmm. in, on past teams. Przingis can, can create a whole different fold because he's not a guy that teams can say we'll live with. Mm-hmm. How in the past you were able to say that with Robert Williams, Al Horford, Marcus Smart. You know, and Marcus Smart was a very inconsistent shooter uh, at time. Marcus Smart could be the most dangerous shooter where he making some shit, and then he could just miss a bunch, and some of his shot IQ wasn't the greatest at times, in my opinion. But um, if there's any star on that team that's the X factor, it's Jalen Brown to me versus Tatum. Because mm-hmm. I, know, I know what Tatum coming with. I know yeah. what he coming with. And he coming with that shit so crazy. He can have a few turnovers. Brown, that shit you was doing, hell no, especially with that money you just got. No yeah. way. And you ain't the same level of defender that we once used to. Hell no, man. Hell fucking no. No, 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 no. It's so interesting to see that happen to players where, like, they come in. Well, maybe not immediately, but they're known as, like, the stopper, the stopper. But then the offensive game evolves. Like, yeah, damn, now I got to allocate more I love energy happens, on this side. Yeah, like a I feel like Jimmy Yo, was like that for a little bit, but I feel like his defense can turn it up anytime. Ch- Jimmy Butler can, yeah, lock in any moment. But, like, yeah, yeah during the regular season, we're not seeing prime defensive Jimmy. He might get seven time. steals. Yeah. Cool. It, it allows mm-hmm. fans to understand the realism. Like, if it's I'm not doing 2K. more on off, yeah, if I'm doing more offense, my defense – it drops, bro. What the fuck? Duh. Unless you 2012 LeBron James. Or Michael Jordan. Yeah. Or Prime Kawhi. I, I, don't, I still don't. I don't think Ka- Kawhi is two DPOYs. Like I, I have 2016 to go back and Kawhi? With those, with those, one of those, he was not the first option. I was like he, say, he was not he out was, there dropping peak of 20 hours. I'm the talking about the Kawhi that was like with um, Aldridge and like late Tim Duncan, that Kawhi. When he was day number one option, and he was pretty much doing b- both things on both sides of the floor. See the the last stages of Kawhi's career in San Antonio, I do not have memories of at all. I don't either because they're kind of like a, it's I that feel you on that. It's when he was, yeah, he was like he waiting for that trade or just like all that stuff that was going on. It was so much. The team was so different. You don't remember because so he didn't play for like a year. Like he literally Zaza's fucked up his quad, yeah. and then literally he didn't play. Zaza might I mean, be the reason know, the Raptors got, got a hurt, ring, but that's the thing. Yeah. So much he got that's injured, crazy. then the drama, then the trade. It was it just was so much and such such little time, and the team went from being a team that you kind of were used to 
for so many years to now LaMarcus Aldridge plays for the Spurs. This is a team that had Tony, Manu, and Tim for Then you bring in DeMar DeRozan with it. <laughs> I got to rewatch that. DeJounte week. Murray. Like, that team was so the different. The last Kawhi year, I got to rewatch all of that. He was dogging, though. Yeah, it was he 25. Was wearing, he was wearing the high, um, the tights, the, the compression tights, and he was killing, bro. That was his last year wearing Jordan, too, I believe. Um, uh, let's get another team in here. Anybody want to throw one out? Yeah, go. the Bulls. I put no, Patrick the Bucks, Wood. The Bucks, oh. the Bucks, I'm let's, sorry. All right, we can go Bucks. We can go Bucks. It's so hard to pick for the Bucks, personally. What I put for the box? Because box, box. I I feel as though uh, well okay oh. I, I think I went with um Chris Chris Middleton That's just literally, because yeah I just put Chris Middleton but in the playoffs he looked like the for sure normal version of himself so I can't even say he if he comes the ball into really, this year I was looking at the percentage he shot the ball kind of bad though like well he was on like, regular season no 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 I'm talking about in the, I was looking at the what playoffs from three. I think it's just because he was overtaxed because Giannis missed those games and now oh, they got to compensate because yeah. uh, he was getting shots up he was ended up like six for 18, 20 points or like. You know, yeah. five for this, or he wasn't shooting his normal. Because normally, at his best, he's like 50, 40, 90 all, most of the time. Yeah, they were a team that literally got hit with the injury bugs, seemed like at the wrong times. Like, Chris Middleton right. missed a big chunk of the year, so now Drew Holiday has to do more, which he did very well at. He did, yeah. And then um, in the playoffs, Giannis gets hurt for two games. Giannis was good. They took that team, like. Yeah, yeah. They, sure. they, yeah, that's actually. I put Adrian Griffin. <laughs> First that head coach for the championship uh, contending teams, tough. And I also put slash Malik Beasley. They bench going to need some help. They bench going to need some help. And if this team can get knocked down shooters, it's a cheat code. So if Malik Beasley come over there and decide you want to shoot 41% from three, they can be very scary. I'm wishing them luck. That boy can buy a bucket when he was playing with us. That's how it is when you play with LeBron. Yeah. You don't, Darren, know, you don't know when you're getting the ball. Darren Williams was the guy that <laughs> you I said thought. said what? You don't know when you're getting it. Darren no, don't say that. That nigga was taking them threes. He was missing. <laughs> Darren Williams one for is going a, one for eight. Darren Williams is a guy that I thought was going to be a Hall of Famer, and I seen him in his career next to LeBron looking like he ain't know how to fucking play basketball. Kyle Korver, one of the greatest shooters of all time, missed some crazy shots with Cleveland next to LeBron James. Shout out to future Hall of Famer Kyle Korver. You know who we seen play with LeBron and damn near get better, though? Ray. Well, he, nah, he did get better. Kyrie. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Kyrie been that man. Rui Hachimura. I say it wasn't no drop off. Huh? It wasn't no drop off. He was Kyrie going to be Kyrie. Kyrie going to hoop regardless. Kyrie going to be Kyrie, Kyrie everywhere. I'm just, trying to, I'm trying to make that understood. Because Kyrie got one father. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most got, of us, everybody do. He got one father, Maybe man. Maybe he got a stepdad and a real dad. What did he say? Broderick? Dred- Dredrick, I think it's that. Dredrick. Dredrick Blank Irving. <laughs> What a, what a crazy! Oh ass. shit! Y'all ever seen that? Uh, Kyrie, come come I have, fuck with us. I, I'm I really bad with names. I don't, I'm bad with names. I don't remember who said the story, but they were telling about like the story about like I think he he had a friend or whatever, and he went ho- he hooped overseas, and he was really good at it or whatever. He ended up having a kid that came back, and that was basically Kyrie. Oh yeah, you yeah. remember that story? He said he said it obviously a lot John better. Strickland, his godfather. No, no, he said somebody told the, dude, the story on the podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was a white guy. I don't. The guy was his just name. saying, you know why I have so much respect for Kyrie. Then he went through Kyrie's story. Oh, okay. and, and that he was like, and that kid ended up being Kyrie or some shit like that. It was well. It was well told. It was well told in yeah. the TikTok I saw. Yeah, Kyrie got to come sit on this couch, man. For real, my boy. You just only. Well, no, I'm gonna wear my Kyrie's when he comes. I just seen. Uh, oh, that's that's Glazer. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna be like, why the fuck you? He got them hoop shoes. He gonna so. see them and give me a new pair. I no, just, he's not. No, he got oh, Anta. He, he gonna come with a pair of Anta. He gonna be like, take Hell it. He yeah. gonna like, fuck them checks up. Yeah, he gonna be like, take that shit off. I'll put, a, I'll put the leather <laughs> sticky note over. That's it. crazy. That's put the ants on. Put gonna, the ants on. I'm sh- Kyrie gonna take a piece of tape and cover that Nike sign up on your <laughs> shit. Like that's what I do. But, but he uh, gonna come up. And, what was he hooping in? Wasn't he, he hooping in like N one? Tape them up or something? No, no, he was hooping in his shoes. He just covered the Nikes up. He had a lot of raw as designs too, oh. or like raw as ways to kind of cover it up. What the fuck? I thought you? he had on a different pair. Like he wore like an off-brand shoe. Mm-mm. No, you have they showed like what the Kyrie yo, ones look like with the yo has seen a meme and ran oh. with it. You do that a lot of no, I swear to God, seeing Kyrie and some Dunkins. <laughs> do y'all remember when um Gordon Hayward signed with New Balance and that was like one of their first NBA athletes? Gordon Hayward. Yeah. No. Oh, who was it? Kawhi. Kawhi. Okay, when Kawhi signed and they were like Gordon Hayward. Maybe maybe it's because Gordon Hayward's white that that's what oh. came to mind. <laughs> and the back of the shoe said Kawhi in that font. No 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 um, no no. I don't. I'm saying that like when it, the person got announced that they're signing there, they were saying, "Oh, them bitches gonna be at Costco." Like they were just making fun. Because oh, New Balance yeah. had no juice at that time. Yeah. Now New Balance is like that, bro. Yeah, the fact. It's kind of crazy how them brands I do that. Yeah, was on it before everybody else but you was. Know what's crazy? I started fucking with New Balance because of Kawhi. Oh. So. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Well, don't say it. Uh, Twitter account that I know. That's to deal with Kawhi. Mm. 
Oh, uh, KB account? So no. Kawhi no. Fitz. I have, no. I have one account. <laughs> Kawhi Fitz. Yeah, shout out to Kawhi Fitz. Were you bringing him back out? I don't know what the fuck you talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I started fucking with uh, Kawhi because the new guy. So I guess when they pay him all that money, that's, that's what happens. But I remember seeing him. He walked in the tunnel with the Raptors. And he had some new band. I'm like, oh, I got to get some of them. Answers next. Yes. Do you think Kyrie, they would? Kyrie come rock with us though. I just seen one of his paid one of his. Nah, Twitter pages. answers not next. You know why? They uh. Th- do you think they are stylish where you could wear them outside? I, I literally don't know, honestly. Oh, I w- I w- I've only I w- seen Clay Thompson's joints. Yeah, but as far as the lifestyle, I, yeah, the I, lifestyle thing is I've yet to be seen. seen. Them. I've never seen them. Also, it's not an American company. Yeah, true. So they're not going to be like attached to like what's going on here as much as. Do you think they would a even New Balance? Care to put out a lifestyle? Shoe? They probably just make a hoop and shoes. Probably. I've never seen Clay Kyrie Thompson. dominates the kids' hoop shoe scene, but now that he's an answer, maybe not so much. We'll see. We'll see what the next couple years look like. Uh, let's go to Cleveland Cavaliers next. I put three point shooting. Um, they went out. They got three point shooting. Now it's just uh, I'm just a uh, just uh, seeing it all happen and come together. That's pretty much all it was. Max Struess. I put Max Struess out in broad. You could just put like all the threes that they got. They have like five or six threes that they could play at that Ooh. spot. They got Max Struess, Isaac, Karis Lever, Isaac Okoro. They have Dean Wade. Dean Wade. Dean, I know. I was they, about I'm missing like probably one other person. No, no they traded Lamar Lamar's and yeah. uh, Jetty Osmond away. So they got Spurs. Danny Green. Do they? They still yeah. got Danny Green. I, I think they do. Oh. Danny Green. Danny, got he a, might a, do. Don't quote me on it. Don't, don't quote me on it. They were definitely trying to play him in the playoffs. They were. He wasn't doing. He wasn't playoffs. doing shit though. <laughs> uh, but, it's funny to see older players go get real tatted. He last played for the Cavs. He tatted now? Yeah, he got a full leg piece now. Oh, it's like his thigh. You might not see it on the court, but he got like some. What could you on to see his thigh? Uh, NBA Ink. Oh. NBA Ink. Somebody pick or up Danny NBA. Green. No, don't pick up Danny Green. He, he's not moving the same. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he's just not. And he already didn't move well. I'm going to say he definitely wasn't. Didn't the, uh, move, yeah. <laughs> no, he wasn't. <laughs> what college you went to? UNC. Yes. Um, but no, I believe him. I hope Max Shoot starts so key. I think, I think he would be will. so small I one through too. three because Max Jesus was six four. That's fine. You six got five. Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. But oh. yeah, but no. So who you want to start? I don't know. Because Isaac Okoro the same height. I I Isaac Okoro's a defender though. Like that's what he his bread and butter is. I'm rooting for Ice because this is like a really last chance with the Cavaliers, yep. considering how much the they second went half in. of the season. George Yang. Did you yeah. say George Yang? No. Oh, him, they do have. I was, wings. There was he was named yeah. Wings. He, can, he, 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 he had slide. three or four. They definitely, they're well, definitely going to ride oh, him at the boy. three in a lot of games. He's going to close out the three at a oh, lot of games. Oh, boy. I hope the Knicks play them again. <laughs> oh, brother. You're not trying to see the minivan? Lock your RJ ass at up? Three. Drop 25 on the Knicks. <laughs> that Jalen ass lined up. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is like one of the last year for Isaac Okoro as far as the Cleveland Cavaliers go. Um, and that's apparent because they went out to go get players that play his position. One game, or I'm sorry, he goes through like two week stretches where he's prime Clay Thompson, and then he can't shoot for the rest of the season. Um, it, it it he's he's one of those cases like man, I got drafted to a team as a project, and then two years later that team became really good, and now they don't have the time to develop me. So I hope he put in that that time by himself um, to do what he got to do because those minutes. Are, last year he played like the year before last he played like 30 minutes a game, then it yeah. went to like a 23, and now this year with all of the wing depth they got. Who the fuck knows what's going to happen with Ice, so good luck. Bulls. Yeah. I put Patrick Williams. I put Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams. Or I put front office. Well, I oh, just, I just got a notification that they're thinking about extending DeMar DeRozan. So. That was part of like the thing with Patrick Williams in the front office. I literally was reading a newspaper the other day, and it was like. You see the White Sox shit? Make or break. Yeah, he might sell them. Yeah. Make or break for what? It was like, if the Bulls get off to a slow start, <laughs> A, DeMar DeRozan. B, Zach Levine. C, uh, Nikola Vucevic. We can have a new team. It was like a big in the newspaper. It took over two pages. It wasn't like a little thing. It shit was big. So for them to be now extending him, that must have, that mean that writer was just bored. They was like, you got to write something about the NBA. And he was like, all right. Mm-hmm. The, the Patrick Williams, I had Patrick Williams as well. It just still in that same like pigeonhole where he's got still DeMar and Zach with him. So you kind of wonder how like the offense is going to come and how he's going to get his shots up. Yeah, I mean, but at this point, year. I think he should say, fuck it. I'm him. He should be the first option. I'm going out here and I'm showing How many points him. is that? Because if he do what he, he can need, average 20 in this league. If he need to do what he do, they'll feel real secure with just moving on. No, that, yeah, that was my part of it. It's like him, him kind of like getting them comfortable with moving on. 
Yeah, and the defensive point, impact is there. The defense yeah. is there for sure. You trained D'Angelo Russell for DeMar DeRozan? Yeah. At some point, would. Patrick Williams got to step up because one of the things about number one options, they 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 don't they can't defer. And if he – I know it's, he should be deferring to those guys there, but he at some point he got to get a little bit of a selfishness in him because if he's always unselfish, he can never be a top priority offensively because he's going to always be like – that's one of my things with Paul George. I feel like Paul George, after his leg injury, he's just kind of cool with just being like, I'll, I'll be Russ's sidekick. I'll be Kawhi's sidekick. Mm-hmm. But you got to have a little bit of like like me at the gym. Watch out, Mike. Watch out. D-Mills, come here. Mike, when I pass you the ball, I'll be ready to shoot. I might be talking about some. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Wait, I know <laughs> Those be my favorite type of players, though. That just can like, they can get in when they fit in, but when it's time, they going to get their buckets. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like people that kind of like kind of force the issue to feel their impact. Yeah, I think Paul. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul sure. George is amazing. But you at what love he does. James Harden, right? I do, but he he <laughs> one of a kind type player. You don't okay. really see. You don't he used really to see force that issue. The motherfucker said, "Stand right there, and I'm finna dribble." That that was the pro am team, bro. With the Rockets, that's literally yeah. the pro am team. It's like so I should be hard. <laughs> I'm joking because I just seen you got to work. For your bad, you got to really be doing. I'm not. I don't feel like be doing step back. I'm center again. I'm sorry. To get fucking. Let uh, me just badge out my. To get I'm point creator. forward again. I gotta be. So I you, gotta go back to the point oh, forward. If they gonna like, bring back the system. I'm. Also, oh, you have to do. You have to have a certain amount of double moves in order to get that badge type of thing. So if you want catch and shoot, you got to go out there and be catch and shoot. Oh, okay. You don't remember? You don't remember that? Time? I think yeah, it was no, 2K I do 17. remember that. Yeah. You'd be like, um, you have finally unlocked your grand badge for shot creator. Right, I remember yeah. that shot. I couldn't. I, I was so happy when that popped up. I actually like the last years. I like the last few years of like how you get your badges. I, I I I'm 28. I don't I don't have time to be in there talking about Mike. Uh, hold up. Let me let me go play this game real quick and do this in and out so I can give ankle breaker. Because I remember before it didn't used to give you a counter of how many times you did it, so you just had to randomly get the notification that you yeah. got it. Yeah. I wonder will they now implement a counter to where you know how many more you have. That shit was, was kind of cool back in the day. It though. was because we was younger. Yeah. But now, now it's just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm excited about this bull season. They keep calling me, too. About season, season tickets? tickets? Yeah, I'm not doing that shit. Sell a team, and then I'll get season tickets again. You want me telling that to them on the phone? No, I like when they call, actually. I like having the conversations with them. Move the United Center to the Burbs. Move the United no, Center to the no, Burbs. No, no, That's no, the, no. That, that and Wrigley are the two things that no matter what should stay there. For That's real. it. Don't put that shit by me. Now, now, my you just wanted for the convenience factor. <laughs> it's not more games because he's gonna go to three games. That's still. bro. Somebody asked me and about the Bears. Need to go somewhere, but it's and just the games that tra- Dame is in. There was like don't have traffic. Our shit just gonna be traffic nonstop. For real? All your normal for real? moves, running up and down to go get this food to go get that shit from there. That shit gonna become forty five minute events. Now. They was asking me if like if I wanted the Bears to move out to like Naperville, and I'm like. It'll be cool, but I'm not gonna. Go. I might go to change. one game. Yeah, don't change much. It's, you should go to. I've never. Still, been to a, I've never been to a Bears game for uh, either, or a football game in general. I went to a preseason game. You ever been to a Bears game? No. We should have went to one. Fuck. We, I mean, we still. I was just saying, yeah, season started. If we do, it had to be like yeah, early before season. Before, yeah. Before, yeah, yeah. I ain't doing that. Coach. Bring the hand warmers out. Yeah. Put them in my no. underwear. Nah. No. This, this Bears team is young. I'm not putting my hand warmers in there for a young team. The, the Bulls are <laughs> the Bulls are um, a 46 win team this season. 46 win. Look it. That's that's a little. That's a little over 500. On. That's not bad. How much you want to bet? Hundred dollars. That's a what? 46. A little over 500. That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. 46. Five games over 500. You think we're gonna be a sub 500 team this year? Yes, sir. Okay. A hundred dollars. That's that's. A, I think that's a good bet, Mike. So are you saying I'm so ready for football season? I'm looking forward to your kickback for week one. Hell yeah. Oh, you doing? I didn't know you were doing a kickback for week one. He was talking about it. You might have been doing some shit, but this was at your wedding. Yeah, we well, were talking I was about getting married. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't mean like if you were walking with us as we were talking about it, or you were taking pictures or something like that. Okay. But uh, yeah, we're gonna do a kickback. You got red zone? I can get it. Because I'm trying to figure out how you plot this. That's it's all. It's a Bears game. Yeah, we're just. Are you gonna watch the Bears game? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And I found out. We so we're Bears know. fans. Yeah. Bear down. Everybody, a Bear fan. Bear, the Bears is like, like I hate on the Bulls. I would not, I used to talk shit about the Bears because my friend Tavares loves them. But deep down inside, I always root for the Bears. Always, I just be like, yeah. I just hate Bears fans. I'm like that with every team. I hate Nick fans. I hate. I don't hate White Sox fans. I hate we, the White Sox. Only six of us. What you mean? 
There's only six Nick, uh, White Sox fans. They, we don't really exist. <laughs> we're the my, we're the but Bears major fan, minority. Bears fans be so thirsty, and I and Mitch Trubisky didn't turn out to be shit. They're still believing him. The minute yeah, Early I, see, tweet. I seen his tweet. <laughs> the minute they drafted him, Bears fans shitted on that man and give him a chance. I'm damn y'all be y'all ain't give y'all give him a, that just that just turned me off. Think that about that me off. Who we could have drafted. Yeah. Because Mitch Trubisky, got but drafted. you could say that but they you, traded you're, but you're only, for Mitch Trubisky. You're only saying that because of hindsight. Hell no! Nah. Like think about who was in the draft. Patrick Mahomes went in the second I round. I don't think Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes on the Bears. Patrick Mahomes, college stats to Texas Tech. Were He's not Patrick impeccable. Mahomes on the Bears. A Patrick Mahomes would have been better than Mitch Trubisky. He's not Patrick Mahomes on the Bears. He's better than Mitch Trubisky. Thank God. God, thank you, Patrick he Mahomes. He's sure better than Mitch, uh, Mitch. Trubisky. I'm gonna throw with his left hand. Oh, be better sure. than Mitch Trubisky. I, I, I like, throw like I this. Like, I like Patrick back. Mahomes <laughs> being a goat. Versus him being an above average court. Oh, he went to the Bears, so the Bears are fake. No, no, no. Put him with Tyreek Hill. You don't got that? You don't think he got that? Put him with uh, Kelsey. Put him with Andy Reid. Put him with the Chief. I want to see and that. And I just, I don't know anything about, but I'm just saying like some people, especially we talk about goal conversations, it feel like no matter, like if you put LeBron on any other team, he was going to be LeBron or Michael Jordan. No, I don't, feel like, that. I don't feel like that in football. Patrick Mahomes on the Bears wouldn't have been Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Football, is so, football is so scheme heavy. You but see players like. go somewhere, they don't be on shit. They get cut. And then they go to another team, they all pro. Yeah. It's so scheme based. If we, you know what I'm saying? Like, if we run heavy. The Bears' offensive scheme. How the fucking Patrick, Patrick Mahomes having Kelsey Hill, just that. I love, I just, with Andy he Reed. So Andy Reed is one though. of the best offensive minds we've He's seen. He's very in close football. to most playoff wins of, in, as a coach in history. I heard that on the podcast. <laughs> so it's, it's happening. We're up on Andy Reed, Donovan McNabb, Eagle shit, man. Like, yep. I love. Patrick Mahomes with the Chiefs, and I'm not number saying, Donovan McNabb well with the Eagles. What I don't, I don't fucking know <laughs> NBA <laughs> player numbers. You ask me uh, what, what number he were. Um, what's up? But I'm excited for football. See, I can't wait. They had the little nigga. Wait. What was the little nigga name? Darren Sproles. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Well, but he played for the uh, the Chargers too, so I had to think about it. But yeah, yeah, they did have him. But yeah, now if you said Deshaun Watson for the Bears. I they didn't, they didn't want to draft a black quarterback. They got one. At the time. They got one now. New new front office now. So I'm glad we they didn't got a brother. Then there, Matt Nagy had all of that shit going on. I, I, I don't know, man. I know I a little know. bit about the Bears just through my dad because he would call me weekly and complain. Who's your about, favorite Bear of all time? Who's it, all y'all favorite um, Bear Peanut of all Tillman. time? Peanut Tillman. Brian Urlacher. Oh, no. Take that back. Do you see what he be up to nowadays? For real. That's I, not your favorite Bear of all time. Okay. I don't know what no, he be no, up to. No, no, no. You can have I'm speaking on the football watch, player. Okay, football, my fault, oh, yeah. my fault, my fault. Oh, you yeah, the Matt Forte. Matt right. Forte was also a guy that hey, I really love you're right, watching. You're right, you Hey, so. the Bear, man, them old Bears, they kept yeah. a runner. But Thomas Jones, Matt Forte. Cedric and Benson, Matt Forte was a workhorse. Cedric Benson, rest in peace for real, for real. Forte was a guy that won moments games. And he could catch the ball. I love running backs that can catch the ball at the back. Dual threat. Shout out Cody Parkey. Oh, oh hell no! Nah. <laughs> Everybody got. I used to have a Devin, a Devin Hester jersey. Devin, yeah, Devin Hester. That's my homie Tavar. That's his favorite. Devin Hester. What college he went to? The U, baby. I the ask ask yeah. me what number he Yo, wore. Hey, what number you? Twenty three. Hey. Okay. <laughs> so you only know Devin Hester from NFL? Yeah, bro. That's go crazy. watch his uh, Miami highlights and watch how he was kick returning mm-hmm. and punt returning and that shit. Hey. I remember the jersey I had. I had to be. Little as hell, because I remember that motherfucker was a little. I think he's the so last. I, I had person to be to like a kid. Take a punt return in the uh, Super Bowl to the yes the house. against the Colts. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was a not punt. That was kick. Oh, kickoff, kickoff. Start. I the remember first missing play of the that. Game? I you remember. Did, mi- are you petty? No, no, because we were on our way to your dad house. Oh hell! Nah. I, I came in the score with seven zero. I'm like, you damn, the what the hell? <laughs> I remember <laughs> watching that game. Y'all gonna say it's cap and sound like almost a LeBron you shit. I was like, hey, watch Devin has to return <laughs> the LeBron shit. shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, <laughs> people gonna say I'm capping, but nah, I believe. You, I, I remember believe. sitting in the living room watching. It's like that electric, bro. Yeah, AP. I just got him on my team too. I'm playing with the base I got base him a kick one. returner. I know he go fucking crazy. I got a Bears franchise right now, bro. Hmm? I got a Bears franchise right now. I'm trying to figure out what to, I'm going to put a poll up today to pick my team. It's like the Falcons, Commanders. Bro, Rams. you just reminded me, too, about this Aux band. I got to have y'all pick today, too. Uh, yeah. How about we We only got through like four NBA teams so we far. Really you know did. who I really like? <laughs> who? From the Bears? Y'all going to be like, he crazy. But I just, I just love gunslingers. 
I love Jay Cutler. I like Jay Cutler too. <laughs> like Him, Jay Brandon Cutler. Marshall, and Alshon Jeffrey. Love, that yeah. was a crazy look. Bro, I met Alshon Jeffrey at North Riverside Mall. <laughs> oh, wow. And I never would have knew, but Tavares is a big Bears fan. He's like, bro, that's Alshon Jeffrey. I feel like I wouldn't recognize a lot of NFL players because of the helmet. He's going to take a picture with him. You know what he says to us? What y'all are on? What's the mood? <laughs> we said, bro. You're the fucking NFL player. <laughs> what the fuck? But it was so random him seeing him in North at North Riverside. Riverside Mall. Yeah, that's a very random. I also spot. love Nathan Vasher when he played for the Bears. He was a corner. Uh, Lance Briggs. I love that 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 trio of Hunter Hillemeyer, yeah. Brian Erlacher, Lance Briggs. You had Tommy Harris. Boy, the ba- Mike Brown in the sa- safety. Oh my gosh. I just like watching Peanut Timmy punch the ball. A lot of people yes. just, just punch the ball. I remember when the Bears got Musa Muhammad. <laughs> they had uh uh Kendall Stewart was the was the was the quarterback. R. W. McCorders. I'm going back too far. I'm going back way too far. Hell no. I have I, I have uh, NBA two K five if y'all ever want to run it. I'm oh, sorry. Um, I got two NFL two K five. Oh, with T O on the cover. Yeah. That was that I game got it was if ever y'all want to run it. That I got game was shit. ahead of its time. You should bring it to my house. Say less. Just remind me. I might have it for like another month. No, I'm taking it home. Right, because you don't have my hard drive. I, I meant to, I, bro. I, <laughs> you know, I, I brought bro. KB's car, and when I got into the car, I'm like, fuck, I, I forgot uh, Pierre's hard drive. The, you know, for him, that's a long walk back to his house because you got to go through fucking seven hallways to get to his <laughs> apartment. At that point, once you get to the car, that's a wrap. Yeah, let's finish this because now I want to talk about NFL. New York Knicks. I put Julius Randle. Quick Grimes. Yes. I put Julius Randle as well. Julius Randle has not. Been the same that he does in regular season. It just doesn't translate into. But when he's scoring season. the ball, the Knicks he had an ankle injury this time, Mike. Yeah, the whole injury. surgery after. But you know what? It's Julius Randle has good year, shitty year. Good year, shitty year. Last year was a good year. So uh, is, is he going shitty or is he, he back? I in think the, he's gonna stay at the same level because he now Jaylen has Brunson. Julius. I mean Jalen Brunson. Yeah, he has Jalen Brunson next to him. Look, I said that they keep calling. This is the this is um the Chicago Bulls right here. Kentrell, there's no need to stress about making plans to unite us. And our front office team can help you maximize your experience so you can cheer for us at the biggest games of the year while saving a bunch of money. Are you free for a 15-minute call? I'm going to provide you transportation to the arena. Provide me with course seats, transportation, and tickets for the guys. Oh, hey. <laughs> tickets for the guys. Hey, you said the key word. <laughs> transportation. I'll go to every Bulls game if they had a truck that would take me and bring me back home. Yeah. For real. Nah, as a matter of fact, that's like extra 41 games. That's a Walk lot, bro. Back. When I was season ticket holder, we went to like 18 games total. It's it's getting out, I feel like, is a, is a tough No, part. no, it's getting there. Getting yeah. out is easy. Yeah, getting, you got to yeah. leave like two hours before to get exactly. there. Exactly. Because of the traffic. Cold. traffic is crazy. Yeah. It right. might be snowing. Fuck all that. Me, uh, You ain't want to go to the Knicks on so me and Dana went. Yeah. I was giving tickets out because I was like, I'm that's what I love when you was a season ticket holder. For one, <laughs> one game they gave me like some upgraded sweet tickets, and I gave the actual tickets to Kyron, and Kyron brought a little shorty to the Bulls game. I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm, I'm like in the suite looking for my seat. Like, is Kyron alone? No, he got a little shorty with him. Okay, Kyron. Yeah, Kyron's on Facetime at uh, Top Golf. We should go soon. I see why you like. Top I wonder Golf. why he ain't invite oh, his like lady it? friend yeah. to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why he ain't bo- you know, plus Dana one. Dana asked him because he rode with me and Dana to the wet to the reception. Um, I almost said the repass <laughs> <laughs> to the reception, and uh, she like, why you ain't we your girlfriend at Kyron or whatever? He like he like man, I, I I wanted to bring this girl, but we kind of just started talking. He like I ain't want to bring her to something like this, and we really don't, you know what I'm saying? We don't That's work good out. Call. Yeah, That's it, good it, call. it is it, like you taking pictures and your yeah. girl there and p- introduced to everybody. So yeah, if I wasn't like, I wouldn't bring her either. That's a good call. Yeah. You don't just bring anybody to a wedding. Yeah, that's what he was saying. So I'm like, good shit. Kyron. Quentin Grimes is the answer for me as well, though, when it comes to uh, X Factors for the New York Knicks. Uh, we saw him take a big jump sophomore year, so I, I'm assuming he's going to take another one. Uh, he showed that he could be a hard-nosed defender and also catch a shoot, but I think there's more to his game. Same. He might have the opportunity to express some of that. Also, I can understand R.J. Barrett as well, uh, yeah. just because – this is another year I'm of I'm learning him. to accept RJ as yeah. who he is. When if you you can watch I, him in FIBA? If, yeah. Okay. I think if you, they have the most, like, matter of fact, let's rewind. Mm-hmm. Do y'all think that they could be a threat to win the whole thing? Because they didn't, they they have a good team, but I thought they was, like, somebody, and I know they kind of, like, practice games. Um, not without Jamal Murray. When, when they said Jamal Murray's not playing, I'm like, they, I think they needed an extra, like, real ball handler on the team. 
Also, their bigs aren't really on shit compared to some of the other bigs they in the league. Shoot. They've been looking good. They've had a couple games where I'm watching like this one. And the RJ Bear game, he got off. Somebody else just got off, and it was like, ah, we can't. Did you even see that on Twitter? So RJ shot like nine for nine, and then Ju- um, Jalen Brunson for Team USA shot like eight for eight. And one, that's what you're talking for, about. Th- oh, no, Evan Fournier got off against them. Oh. <laughs> and I guess I think it's against Germany. Uh-huh. And they were like, oh, we can't take RJ Bear game serious. Because Every, everybody's getting <laughs> off against them. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> um, the real shit start when we in Toronto, right? Or is it? In a couple of days. Uh, like I think it's the 20, 28th for, oh, for okay. us, for Team USA. I don't know about any other team. Yeah, I think it really started on 25th. Uh, who y'all y'all think USA going to run through that or what? Ant-Man been? I feel the like they're going to have – it's going to be – I feel like they're going to pull it out, but it's not going to be like they dominating. I feel like it's going to be a tough game. I think yeah, Germany they, seems really good. Now, I've also seen Germany get their ass spanked a few times already. But they got a lot of talent. Spain without Ricky Rubio don't look the same, even though – I think they're the number one ranked team in the entire tourney. Mm-hmm. Uh, Montenegro – uh, has Vucevic. Y'all just seen Noshioni? That's it. Yeah. yeah. Noshioni said, that's some bullshit. Eric. Bahamas look kind of nice, though. That's, they, why, they he's, that's nice. why he's saying that. Eric, for those of y'all that don't know, Eric Gordon plays for the Bahamas all of a sudden. Um, and Noshioni basically saying that's some bullshit because he played for Team USA. He's won with Team USA, and now that he's just magically with the Bahamas, it's some bullshit. Um, Doesn't Aiden play for the Bahamas, too? Yep, yes, him and Buddy Hill and uh, Eric Gordon. That's the three NBA players. Yeah, that just... Going to work. You saw what DeAndre Aiden said? No. He said, you? These are my the best teammates I've ever had on and off the court. That's Talking crazy. about Team Bahama. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing Eric Gordon going to the Suns. Right, right. If I'm Devin Booker, I'm like, Boy, I don't give a fuck about nothing you talk about. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I don't give a shit. About Ain't no nothing. way he said that. Yes, he did. That's crazy. Yes, he did. Motherfucker played with Chris Paul. Chris right. Paul, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, hey. Mikhail Bridges, Cam. They might have been finding him a little more. His stats might be crazy. I have no idea. <laughs> I've only seen the highlights of Eric Gordon hitting three back to back to back step back threes to win a game. I ain't seen nobody healed or DeAndre Aiden moments. Hawks, um, Atlanta Hawks, uh, and Yaka Kongu. Okay. Um, I feel like we've been just waiting for him to waiting. to take that spot, but he's just been so inconsistent in comparison to Clint. Like, of course, the ceiling is a lot higher than Clint's, but like when you have a team that traded three first round picks for Dejounte Murray, you you don't really think about development as much. But, like, what is this going into year number four for Nyaka? Or is this year number five? It's one of the two. You're like, man, eventually you want him to have that spot. Um, and I think he can do it. Like, you watch the clips of how nasty he can be defensively. And you're like, man, if he brought that for 30-plus minutes a game, he, he's a for sure starter. But it's hard to bring that all day, every day. It is. If he's at that point, he basically, bam. You know, I think a lot Oof. of things that kind of, like, turn him down a little bit is still, like, his size a little bit. He does play bigger than what he is, but – it's just hard to man up that paint at like at the size he is. I have put uh, Jalen Johnson and I also put Sadiq Bay. I feel yeah. like after John Collins is gone, you're gonna need somebody to kind of replace those those minutes in that, in that area. And Sadiq Bay, I think he was averaging like 20 to 25 minutes, you know, at the after he had got traded in that second part of the season. So they're already looking like they're already gearing him up to have like a bigger role. I just you say it's probably Sadiq Bay starts, right? I would assume so. Yeah. But who knows? Jalen Johnson got to start. Bro. We saw Jalen Johnson at the at the uh, airport. I thought that was funny. <laughs> I was uh, I had said we? yeah. And um, in Vegas, Vegas, we were at baggage claim. He's right next to us, waiting for our bags. Oh, oh y'all saw him because y'all shit was getting lost. I I'm I'm so sorry. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a dickhead friend. They was going through. And I kept telling Mike. Yeah, they said the bags just got lost. <laughs> 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 oh no, that was, was uh that was Atlanta. That was Atlanta. Is that what you're talking about? When I, the whole carousel broke, yeah, we had to yeah. wait for an hour and a half? Oh, that was Atlanta. That was Atlanta. Yeah, because Vegas, I had came. Y'all was already gone. But no, Vegas, they gave y'all the wrong thing. Yeah, we went so to the wrong bag. Yeah, um, you're right. You're right. It's like, nah, yo, they, they, they said that the bag is just mysteriously just got gone. bad luck when it comes I, to that type of shit. I don't check my bag, man. I have I got to. that Gucci. You can't Because I tried to do y'all. it on, on in this last trip. That I'm, like, I'm just going to put the drinks in my bag. I put one just to see what they would do. Took that shit out. Mm-hmm. You can't have this. Yeah, they took my bag. I'm like, what I got now? He like this lotion. I'm like, throw this shit in the garbage, then, motherfucker. Get my bag. <laughs> I'm touching shit. <laughs> I remember. remember <laughs> There's like six percent basketball talking this shit, but it, again, it, 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 it is what the, it is. No, I'm going off the real again. Yeah, we went to the airport. This nigga Anwar got tacos on the belt, going through the thing. <laughs> 
I'm like, you got the whole Wait, where? This is in uh, Utah. <laughs> Utah. This is when the fan had made us tacos. Oh. Tacos going through the, you know the security thing? Yeah. yeah. You put your bags on. <laughs> a, a thing of taco was just going through. Did it get through? Yeah, you can't have liquid. Oh. Yeah, break I didn't know that. Yeah. When did he get the tacos? A fan had brought them. Like right before we were leaving, a fan brought them to our hotel, and then we just dipped off. Yeah. It's just stanking. <laughs> just like, just blowing me. Just well, like, did y'all have them really good? I ain't, I ain't eating, but he had onions and all that. I'm like, bro, come on with that. It's 9 o'clock. The fuck? <laughs> it was early <laughs> as fuck. Um, my ex factor for the Hawks, uh, DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre Hunter, DeAndre Hunter, DeAndre Hunter. I do like the Jalen Johnson window at the same time. I think DeAndre Hunter is taking uh, good steps as an offensive player over the last couple of years. Um, my homie Terrence just sent me something. That says Xbox introduces a strike rule for toxic gamers online. After seven warnings, you get banned from multiplayer and voice chat for 365 days. Holy Damn. shit! Well, that's, thing, that's a great. I don't got to worry about that though. We on Discord. We on Discord. I don't. I don't. The don't last no time I sent a message was. <laughs> No, I might have sent a message like a couple weeks ago. You crazy. Yeah, I don't send messages. Man. I forgot what happened. I think I beat somebody in mad. And but I that's because we're not playing 2K. When we play Pro-Am, people send me messages. When we bust people's ass, they'll send a message. Or they beat us, they'll be like, bomb man. Oh, they I used to just send people like, you play well. That was that was. <laughs> you know, they scheme? I'll say, I'll say all this shit. <laughs> I, was like, Thanks, I wish man. they had. This is like some futuristic <laughs> type shit, too. That shit blow my for Motherfucker, then they finna come in my chat, talk shit, and I'd be like, thanks, dad. I wish in 2K, <laughs> like... There was a feature which, and like, Yo if you're standing next to somebody, you can hear what they saying. They ain't gonna reply. Oh, uh, proximity chat. Yeah, like proximity pro- chat existed at one point in 2K. When? Uh, this is a while well, ago, but it existed. They if took they it can out. bring that to the court, so if like I'm standing by my dude and he ain't got, he got zero points, he and I start us. talking shit. He with us. Anytime a nigga shoot, he with us. Hey, if you t- <laughs> hey, you shoot that shot, you touch Ram, y'all get a bunt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hornets. I just said getting better. Just develop as a team. <laughs> like just develop as a team. The X Factor is getting better? Yeah. Just, That's crazy. Just developing. Just development. Hey, That's Hornets, it. y'all Twitter account got to gotta go at hell. <laughs> I said Brandon Miller. I know he's a rookie, but they need some fresh young talent to come in. They last couple drafts. Mark Williams was still up in the air. I, I like Mark Williams, but they didn't play him early on. But the book nights and all of that, they, they need a, a new jolt. Of energy. Yeah. And then him and LaMelo having a full season together. LaMelo didn't even play that many games last yeah, year. So. Mark like Williams, 30 LaMelo, something, right? Brandon Miller. I like that. Yeah. At his fullest potential. Um, I went with Steve Clifford because he has a reputation of not playing his young guys as much as he should. Yeah. Last, William, um, Mark Will- last year, Mark Williams. This is a year that you have no choice. So I'm excited to see what that looked like. Gordon Hayward playing over Brandon Miller. I wish you would. Mason Plumley. I went uh, Brandon Miller and also Mark Williams. I feel like it's really on the young guys. Uh, the Hornets, it feels like the only staple right there or right now is LaMelo. They need to have some other thing that they can kind of hold on to, like for Shirley. Are you excited about Hornets basketball? They do be excited. <laughs> they do be excited. Yeah, yeah, no. He's healthy, they be excited. Oh, I was, they, I was they looking at their first roster. game every day because they're on the East Coast. So you watch them for 30 minutes, you turn into the other game. I was looking at like the uh, stats from like the previous season, and I was like, Damn, Terry Rozier do be hooping he for them. <laughs> he do be hooping. Top 10? I don't Miles know. Bridge is best. He's, he was in my top not, 10 like two years ago. He's not top 10 now. Um, he, you when missed you did it. it. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. Yeah. Miami Heat. That boy, he gets shots up. That's what he do. And some of them go He can play for my team. I like that. He got that one highlight where I think he had like an in and out. And he had like spent around and he had messed somebody up bad. Oh, he did that like yo-yo dribble or whatever he did. Sham God? Sham God. It wasn't like this though. He it could have been a sham guy, but I swear he had a little twist Did he on him. Did he duck on KD? Would KD play for the Nets? Mm. I don't know. I don't That's want, the type of shit Terry Rozier do. Uh, he, I uh, put Tyler Hero. Uh, he his name has been in a lot of trade rumors, uh, and he got to come back, and now he got to fucking prove it unless he get traded again. <laughs> hey, again, <laughs> his. <laughs> I mean, not again, but unless he gets traded. <laughs> His career so far is better than some guys in the league. That's what you got to say. Yeah, that's what, that's, that is what you got I put, uh, I say Hero and Nikola Jovic. They need some young talent on this motherfucker team to do something, man. This team is he old. performed in FIBA? I have no idea. This team is Who, old. Jovic? Yeah. I don't know. As shit, bro. I put uh, Caleb Martin. Just for them to just kind of like play how you play in the playoffs. Yeah, they're <laughs> going to. The defense, I feel like the Heat are going to be cool, but they're going to need some of that offense, especially with. Uh, they had Gabe Vincent, you know, he's gone now. So Tyler Hero can kind of replace a little bit of that, but they're going to need uh, Kayla Martin to be on his stuff. Watch this. Mine is Kalo. Okay. 
Is that Kevin Love or Kyle Lowry? Which one? That's Kyle Lowry. Yeah, it's Kyle Lowry. Um, I think I'm. S- I, I expect a lot. I expect Kyle Lowry's play to really take off in the playoffs, like it similarly did. But like in a regular season, I don't really expect. He's kind of. Yeah, I just don't really. His I feel like his the way he impacts the game stands out way more in the playoffs than in the regular he's, season. He's uh he's gonna be a solid trade piece at the deadline as far as making money match for something. Orlando that twenty plus million dollars gonna be nice. Orlando Magic. I put second year jump from Paolo. I put Wendell Carter. Uh, they they gonna need spacing. I feel like they have all the size. It's just like he's been really good and uh, the way he's been progressing. If he could take a little bit more of an extra jump and like be more of a little, <laughs> just a little bit more impactful and space the floor for them, he's gonna be good. Is Wendell Carter really good at basketball? He is. If you if you were ranking top ten centers in basketball, is he in conversations? No. Mm, interesting. You don't have to be. You could be really good at basketball and not be in top ten though. I'm just asking conversation though, which means he could be twelve to thirteen. I'm just asking what your head was at Wendell Carter. I did Jalen Suggs, man. I me, did too, Suggs. Me, me too, P. I did Jalen Suggs. He feels like he might be getting lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Because uh, they have a lot of young talent. I'm surprised by some of y'all answers. I think the guys y'all name, I think they're going to come with it. I think Wendell has been consistently. W- Wendell is really good at basketball. There. I think Paulo, he's there. I think the X factor are the shit that you don't know. Because you know what you're getting from some of those guys. Like, that's what. If we go to the gym and we know me and Mike is coming with it, the X factor is if Derek plays like a 6'3", 6'4", 250 motherfucker who can't be guarded. You the X factor. You know what I'm saying? If you come with that force, we we ain't losing that day. Yeah. And I feel like that with these with these X factors. It's like I know Paulo is going to be their guy. I know Wendell. He's been really consistent for them in that front court. Who – Markel could like make them a whole different team. Jalen Suggs could make this this shit different. So Jalen Suggs on a six man show this week. I ain't get to watch it yet, but shout out to the homies. Yeah, he was uncomfortable. I, I don't <laughs> disagree with you, but I feel like you could also build on that because at this point, and this is kind of just off of that same like situation with D Mills. It's also an X factor on us because if he not coming with it, we already know we got to step up too. Yeah, but I mean, you could just say that with anything then. Every everybody's the X factor there, yeah? because if shit, um, if if Anthony Davis don't do shit, Brian need more from you. I mean, that's just like, but I don't really think because you really can. Certain players hit certain levels because that's who they are. So for the most part, Brian and Anthony Davis are going to show up for the most part. So that means that the X factor is Austin Reeves, D'Angelo Russell. You can always say, you know what I'm saying, it, it goes back on you, but that's what the X Factor is. Who so the see? X Factors can never be the number one and number two guys. It has to primarily be like the third or fourth. Everybody has their own interpretation. Rotation. For me, not directly, unless like certain players we talked about with injuries. Yep. So that's what you're the X Factor. If if the Clippers have been missing Kawhi, his, my X Factor is Kawhi's health. Okay, He's the best player, but I mean, if he ain't there, that team is t- totally different. But if we talk on a healthy team – yeah, my X factor for the Warriors won't be Steph. It won't be Steph Curry. Oh, hell no, it won't be Steph I'm thinking Curry. Thinking about it yeah. too. They have you. How do you prioritize the guards in, in Orlando? Because he's got. He's, what is he going to be the fourth one then? So I feel pretty good about. Who Mark- would be the fourth one? I'm talking about Jalen Suggs. Jalen Suggs. I feel Who pretty good about Markel, Markel Cole, Markel Anthony, folks. Anthony. Black. I'm not putting Cole Anthony over Jalen Suggs or yet. even Anthony Black yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, shit. I don't know. <laughs> Oh no, I might put Anthony. Black. Even at that, that's still, it's just a question in the air, though. Just because Anthony, you know that the, the two things that Anthony Black and Suggs have going for them is that they potentially, and I'm saying potentially for Jalen Suggs specifically, can play to both guard positions. A Cole Anthony is not your two. Them on yeah. the court together sounds awful, though. Jalen Suggs and Anthony Black, yeah. space and wide. It's just like yeah, for sure. <laughs> he Wendell Carter, space it out a little bit, <laughs> literally. Especially if Paolo's also on that court, because you know he ain't a three point shooter either. Franz, Franz gonna knock it down though. Yeah, Franz, Franz consistent there. At least he has been. Uh, Jalen says, cause you know, yeah, he he could come off the bench for them. And I, I'm predicting a really really good year for Wendell Carter. I think too. he's been I think he's been very nice. I'm expecting not an all star or anything like that, but like his best season. More, yeah, his best season. More people to really recognize that front, cor- that front court is. I think that front court is locked. Yeah. I, when I think about the Magic, it has nothing to do with he, three. He might four, have five. the best contract in all of basketball. He signed like a four year, forty million dollar contract a few years ago. That's crazy to me for the type of production he provided. When you see some of them up out here getting four That's years, not, eighty. You start your career as a bull. You ain't be. You ain't on shit. Yeah. Daniel Gaffer should have been getting some starting. Larry Market has signed two <laughs> years, what, 36? He's making like 17-ish a year. Mm. Daniel Gaffer's going to get lost in the shuffle, too. Sorry. 
I oh. think I think he was my X Factor for the Wizards. Right, let's talk about the Wizards X Factor. Jordan Poole. X Factor. Actually, no, Danny. I had put Tyus Jones. Yeah, I put Denny. I think I had put Tyus Jones because I think this is probably. I know we've seen Tyus Jones play a lot of really good basketball, but now he has a like more of a workload. A I, we could probably see him have a even better year than we've seen him having in the past. So Tyus Jones is better, but I felt the same way with Monte Morris. I was like, we gonna see Monte Morris. Yeah. yeah. Tyus, I mean, Tyus Jones definitely better. I put um, Denny, though, for the def- – just like he's obviously, like, defensive. He can hold his own defensively. I want to see him do a little bit more on the offense, and I think he can kind of get that. with just, like, the shooters around him. Kyle Kuzma can shoot. Jordan Poole can shoot. Tyus Jones can shoot. The center don't really matter. But just him being – having more opportunity to score. Yeah. I'm going Jordan Poole. Kind of like the conversation we just had with Derek was like – would I ever make the best player or the number one option? I want him to. I want him to show us if he could be a number one. I think this Wizards team is easily directed into their next transition if Jordan Poole shows consistency in being like one of their building blocks, versus like the Warriors. He's just this young guy who's talented, and some nights he can give you thirty. Some nights you can't even play him. He has to find some consistency in being a valuable plus player for them whether it's just being all plus offense, mm-hmm. um, whatever. But if he ain't going to be mm-hmm. defending, he at least got to be, like, locked he in. One of them night, players, night basis. He one of the players I feel like, depending on his first, his first week goes, he could get he could grab a lot of attention, you know, because if he starts off and he had, like, 28, 28 points, 30 points, and that carries over to the next couple of games, he's going to start off really hot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm excited to see Jordan Poole in that situation just because he's going to have so much freedom. Like he's a, he yeah. seems like a guy that if you give him a long leash, he can just very much impress you. Especially like a lot of times the Warriors when they would just put him in there with the second unit, he would just be it's like it's the pool party as people say, and he would spaz and he would be very exciting to watch. Yeah, Detroit basketball baby. I put Jalen Duran, James Wiseman. Um, they they in some league they hinted at this like twin tower look that they look like they want to experiment with. I'm interested to see if there's actually something that they roll out. And if it's successful, then that could be a very dangerous team to play with, with Cade and Ivy, Bogdan at the three, and then you got the two twin towers. This is a situation where Boy, I went with Boy, the Boy, best, Boy, yeah, yeah. Uh, went with the best player, Cade Cunningham, because the Detroit Pistons, are, I think, were third last year in total pick and rolls, ran per game or whatever, and they were fucking awful at it. And now they got Cade Cunningham, who is a really, really good pick and roll player. Um, you saw those in the scrimmages, how they told him, play like Luka, Steve Kerr told him to play like Luca so they could prepare to go against Luca in a couple days, and then Luca didn't actually play. I'm just excited to see him um, develop that part of the game, not just for himself, but also for those bigs. Because him being the pick and roll ball handler versus Killian Hayes is night and day if you Jalen Duran or if you James <laughs> Wiseman. So him being inserted in the is helping the progression of all of the centers, so you can really figure out yeah. which one of these guys you really care about. I did James Wiseman slash Marvin Bagley. I think if they can capitalize on getting one of those guys to, uh, you know, be, be uh, be productive. That's a good win for the for the Detroit Pistons to take somebody else's former lottery pick, well, top picks. Both of them were the, the second overall picks. If, to be able to take another person's trash and make it treasure would be good for them because they have a lot of young talent. They got Duran, Ivy, uh, Cade. They now have a Amin Thompson. I uh, know Asar Thompson, um, Stewart. Uh, yeah, Isaiah Stewart. It's just a lot. They of got them. so much talent. Killian so, Hayes. You still got to count him as yeah, young. I mean, Killian Hayes. They got all of this talent, and if they can, uh, Isaiah Livers. If they can be able to take somebody else's talent and add it to the, that'll be really, really good for them. Like imagine if Marvin Bagley rejuvenated his career with the Pistons. They just got a second overall pick, discounted or Wiseman. Yeah. Even if they don't start, but if they're just like impacting and helping this team, those those to me, whenever you can get somebody else's pick who was a top pick and be their change of scenery to give them a jump, that just puts you on a different trajectory in my opinion. So um yeah, I'm looking at those guys. I went with Kane. Um I feel like he's literally the X factor in terms of like he kind of controls like how much they jump. There isn't there isn't really much expectations. But he just unlocks everything else for everybody else. Like, he makes the game easier. People don't have to worry about as much playmaking or pushing the tempo. They can worry about doing what they do best. Um, I'm happy to have him back, man. Seemed like people forgot about K. Pacers. I, I went Benedict Matherin. I went with uh, two guys that they signed. Oh, they he got. Too, Bruce Brown will be tapping? Yeah. Oh, that was a good Dumb one. Them dudes come with it. It's a playoff team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. 
So, they were provide I mean, defense yeah. and size what they needed. Yeah, a lot for a big part of last year they were a playoff team even without mm-hmm. them guys and. Benedict Matherin was having a crazy year. He was looking like he could potentially be in real conversations for rookie of the year. So could he run into a sophomore slump? Uh, probably. I mean, there's a I chance. I mean, you saw yeah. him second but half of the season. He didn't he look nearly down. as good. But yeah, but I feel like when you're playing with Tyrese Halliburton and you add other guys like Bruce Brown, Obi Toppin, it kind of like takes the pressure off of him a little bit. So like he could still come off the bench and be that six man punch. I'm surprised he's not playing feeble ball right now. We all might have the same answer. The Nets. Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. <laughs> Benny. <laughs> Benny, Ben, Ben. Yeah. Don't let us down, Benjamin. This is, the last, this is the last year of me. Come on, Benjamin. Being on the Ben Simmons train. Oh, man. There's going to be another year. This is year, if bro. This, no, if, no, I won't allow it. I'm honestly not allowing it. If, he, if it doesn't happen this year, there's going to have the same cycle where it's going to have workout videos. It's going to have why, all but these But why would quotes. you fall forward for the why, fifth Why would we need another year? It's just a cycle. We're banning the <laughs> hype on through the wire if next year he don't provide. Now, if he gets injured, I'm st- I'm still not allowing it because at that point <laughs> it's the same cycle. I'm saying if next year he's not te- terrible in the sense of him, he I'm not expecting him to go to All NBA. If he's just better than last year, then we could be like, okay, next year. What if he blows his knee up? <laughs> Somebody knock on the wood. It it is what it is. You did what it is. He gonna, he gonna you need your knees it. to play basketball. He going to come with the cum. <laughs> Raptors, last but not least, man. That's the last team? Yes. Oh, man. Um, I did Scotty Barnes. I put Scotty, too. It's time yep. for him to take I the I went reins. with the coaching staff. Scottie. Who the fuck is going to be there Damn. doing it? <laughs> do it? Oh, man. Um, yeah. I'm happy we did this. But it also, it's like, how can we? The X Factor is so, like, in my opinion, just, like, kind of boring in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do it every year, and I'm like, fuck. That's how you know we're in the off-season, off-season. we like, what the fuck are we doing? Who put this thing is chat? cool to talk like, about the team? I had put, um, what was my idea? I, I don't know. Don't say it, because we might use it later. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't dare be saying some generic shit. x factors is generic as, as it could get, True. though. Man, it's, maybe, it's, maybe, it, maybe I'm referring to Mike. <laughs> maybe I'm referring to Mike. What did you put, Derek? I don't even remember. Mike, one of y'all, Derek was trying to forget the fact that we did the West. I feel like oh, you have it. to do both. You can't do Western yeah, Conference and say, a, fuck the East. Yeah. Well, we doing around. Half of NBA fan bases don't get talked about. <laughs> it's like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, you know, through the wire, going to do it. We're going to come to work. We're going to make it work. Um, All I, we do is work. We won't be here Saturday, but again, that episode will be uploaded. By Tuesday, um, at least. Are we going to do our first ranking in and Toronto? Toronto? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. We can. Fuck it. Especially if we not. Oh, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, we can. Let's do it. Because there's not nothing topical going on around us. Or at least right now. Know. Dame gets traded while we on our flight over. Yeah, then boom. Possible. It's it's not really possible. <laughs> I don't know how that's about to play. I have no they, idea. It already another report out. already recently came out that they're not willing. They still aren't excited to trade them to Miami. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, we, so, we, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but it is what it is. One day we should come in and just gossip. About NBA stuff? We should do like a shade room episode. No, 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 no. Yeah, we should. If y'all do, let me know beforehand so I can call in sick. On some NBA, on some NBA shit, though. <laughs> Anything gossip related. I'm just, especially intentional gossip, you know? I think a lot of yeah. stories we talk about just falls into gossip because nah, it is like aggregated they, man, shit. Damian Lillard really saying that. He just out there tripping. <laughs> See, or like, and that's the way that, you get Dame not to fans, ever come on the podcast. Blazers fans really yeah, found yeah, out anyway. that. <laughs> but hey, we get we've been getting better and better. He unfollowed the Blazers on Instagram. He did. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, we finna do a whole episode. Did you of also that. see that School Henderson never started yeah, following? Yeah, he never the started following him. Is that more concerning? Because <laughs> <laughs> at least Dame is public. I don't yeah. want to play for y'all no more. School, like, damn. But also, I understand because. What is they posting? I muted House of Highlights on Instagram. Spoiler alert. I muted them. All right? They still got the follow. Why you follow? Why you ain't follow? Huh? Why you ain't follow? They're still my employer. What that mean? I just, I don't know. It took them a long but time they, to follow us. True. But they post so much shit. I'm like, I don't want to see somebody hitting a baseball with their feet. That's just not <laughs> my, my timeline. I don't want to see nobody make a purchase at the store and they just start dancing and all of a sudden it's on House of Highlights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, if I'm scooped, like they just going to be posting stuff of me anyway, so why do I need we it? We getting old, man. 
We was here when House Highlights posted highlights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said the stow and dancing. I can go I do it. I can go to my mom's house and do a trick in the driveway. Tomorrow that shit will be ben, on House Highlights. Do you know that Treshawn put in his story? He sent it to me and said, can you get it on House of Highlights? He I was like, I could, to me. I could try. I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> the video was funny as shit, though. I said, no. You want to do hooping in the shite? I said, no. Oh, yeah. Like play Madden, though. I did no. see that, though. Do not DM me talking about get anything uh, on House of Highlights. I did no. it because that's, you know, family. I said, I'll try. No. But I, I don't got we yeah, got that to much the fire. For that's not what I want to see on there. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't give a fuck that you family. I don't want to see that shit on House of Highlights. Even if you're my family, no. There's so many House of Highlights replica accounts now. Mm-hmm. When you think about it, like and they everybody's posting the same shit. You it's know what like, I kept seeing? Um, how are we gonna determine our fantasy draft order type videos? And they'll mm. be doing some crazy shit, or they got to do some obstacle. Course. Should we do that? See, those things are fun. But I just I just don't. Think about the brand that is what it is. It doesn't fall under it, in my opinion. But yeah, I seen the um, I seen this dude. I posted it to my story. Um, he was like, "Come with me on my college visit," and he went to visit North Carolina. He's a wide receiver, and I watched it. And I'm like, "Oh, Hoh, this is some good shit." Yeah, it wasn't Hoh, mm-hmm. but it, I thought it was Hoh because the type of shit that they post. Mm-hmm. But it was somebody else. Too. I guess. Probably making their own HOH type account. Probably college football related. But yeah, that's a that's a little lane. You just get you a little lane and you you go crazy. You you be decent. I mean, it pays a lot of bills. You know. I see rap pages now where they just only post rap. Um, college football, college basketball, high school, slow The dude we met at EJ game. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I'm at the DM bro real soon. He got him. He got him a nice little uh, little lane. Yeah, when you make that land, you kind of got to stay in it. I think when you try to swerve or swerve, it get real murky, bro. I wonder which of the companies was first to, like, use the other people content shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, Some Kyrie page posted me asking Kyrie oh, yeah. a question. I saw that. That was my first. Hey, bro, that's P. That's P. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I understand why people yeah. do it, though. Because having a Kyrie centric page, just for an example, limits what you could technically do. I guess it depends on what your motives are or what are you trying to make money? Because no. Kyrie itself is not going to do that. No, they're not trying to make money. There's no way you I was going to say, I feel like you got to first and foremost be a fan. <laughs> I love Kyrie, Those but fan there's no accounts? way you think, hmm, it's going to be looking good. The bro. fan accounts be having know, everything. They be like, man. Kyrie just Kyrie just bought a new ring. It costs two point seven million. Like they be knowing everything. That's when sick. I see some of those, you got to be a fan because no, like dude that don't want to do that. Just like let me dig into this man business. You be seeing some of them accounts post how much money they made from like tweeting and stuff. I'll be like, damn, y'all be really be right making- now. Social media is a very lucrative business, and uh, I don't know much about Instagram specifically. I don't fucking post on Instagram. But just in general, you can make so much money by tweeting and TikTok. Instagram and used to have it where you can monetize your reels. I think they took it away. That nah, you can still make money off reels. Oh, you can still? I just you personally never enough views on your reels. Oh. I've never found myself going through reels to even care really? about posting. I them. do. I do? do too. I go through reels I, on Insta- on Instagram. I go through reels, but same. Be I feel like it's the same as TikTok. But I just never open my TikTok app. See, same. I go on TikTok definitely way more, um, or Twitter. I guess. And yeah. YouTube. Because at the same time, they're usually from the same creators and they just 100%. post it on an Instagram. Yeah, you just you just maximize your revenue if you post on YouTube. I told y'all TikTok, I made almost two hundred dollars. I I lied. I thought I made one ninety eight. I made one oh eight from Twitter. Mm. Oh. Big difference. I got a one fourteen little check in. Yeah, I'll take that. Not because I wasn't intentionally trying same. to, you know, make money. I, it I just can, happened. I that see way. who be intentionally trying. And sure. I ain't mad at him. I ain't, I just don't have the energy. Well, yo, your ass be trying too hard, there. <laughs> for real? He you got a real. whole job that that you that you good. You don't have to be trying that hard for that. that tweet. Do you do you actually try or did just? No, that's a lie, Derek. As your what friend, did he I'm tweet yesterday? Like, yeah. He just tweeted something. What I was just when a rose about. come from a concrete, and you, I, that was the, I was just trolling. I literally and, I, and you did that. The streets ain't for everybody's sidewalk shit twice. You did it on your <laughs> own. Then he came under my tweet and did I'm damn. I was fucking around. You really? You got trying to get them interactions. All right, all right, so let's, let's go through Derek tweets and no find out. here, bro. Was he trying to get the bag? That's all the right, game. Was he trying to get the bag? The first two are WWE tweets. Um, this kind this is kind of crazy that the IC match isn't the main event. Hashtag WWE Raw. 
that feel like he wasn't out there trying to get a bag. The hashtag, he, he wants that interaction, but it's okay. The hashtag. Mm-hmm. Kevin. The hashtag for? Just because I want, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's, Kevin Owens is back. Heat emoji. I'm sure that's wrestling shit too. Yeah. Okay. That was not, okay. It wasn't a hashtag? It wasn't a hashtag. And I'll take, the, I'll take back what I said about the first hashtag then. The next one is a video of Devin Booker hooping. He said, I think he needs to see some double teams. He was trying to be funny. That was a that was a tweet for the interactions. Talk oh, to me, Derek. That was a tweet for the interactions. Okay, okay. That was a, hey, that was time a, out. By the way, they had found, they they just discovered drugs too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had jokingly said, Yeah, I'm like, they like, damn people. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, man, I want to know you better. Don't let my baby face fool you. I'm a member. <laughs> and dude talking about a Costco member. <laughs> That's pretty good. Homie. Though. Homie. That's pretty good. That was a good one. I spared you. <laughs> I had one lined up that was so crazy that I said, I don't know how people gonna act in the comments. They may make this one hurt too much. <laughs> so I'm letting you know. And his name was like, man, I talk shit for a living. Some shit like that. Thank me, dog. I spared you. I, had, <laughs> I don't even know how. I, bro, it just lined up where you was finna get it. <laughs> I had one lined up for him so badly. It was so crazy that I'm like, I pulled it back. I'm like, I ain't, I'm not even going to do that, bro. I'm going I'm to let him get his one off. Because the one I got, it, it was, I'm like, I, the people gonna laugh at this one too much. He gonna fucking disable Twitter, and I'm like, I don't even want to see that happen. The next one for Derek is says, pick the best all time shooter here as Dame, Ray Allen, Reggie Miller, and Clay Thompson. Derek quoted and said, the one who can shoot a side step off the dribble with his defender closing out. Clay Thompson was can do that. Con- you got interactions. They called you a, the biggest glazer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that was because all of them. Can do that, yeah, but not at the level of what Damian Lillard is doing. Why now. would Reggie Miller be able to do that when he played in the nineties? Yeah, I know. The funniest part so about them calling you a so, Glazer is that so, they use Peter call you a Glazer. The, yeah, the video <laughs> is yeah. Yeah. So you're you're holding that against Reggie Miller then? No, times has changed. No, I was just answering the question. No, no, no. But you, but now I'm asking you a question. It's nothing against Reggie Miller. I'm just saying he wasn't. He doesn't. He none of those other shooters. Do it at the level that Damian Lillard does it. Right when Reggie Miller played, that wasn't it a wasn't thing. a thing. So yeah. how can you gauge that against him? I'm just gauging. I'm using everything. What I took from that is they didn't want to put the best motherfucker up there. They they they, actually, you know they wanted they, they wanted they people to pick who's two. Yes. Yeah. When you when you talk about the best shooters of all time, Damian Lillard is going to be the closest thing to Steph Curry. I don't know. Wow. And variants maybe. I don't know yeah. about that. And variants. Clay Thompson is literally the nexus thing to him. I'm talking about the ability to do it off the dribble, catch and shoot, all but that. That's my question I'm getting at you right now. Does that make you a better shooter? Or does that mean you can shoot it more in different ways? Because I think the ability to do it in more different ways can also make you a better shooter. Especially no, the no, difficulty. No, I, I know it can, yeah. but I'm asking, is that just a defined because hypothetically speaking, yeah. me and you are three point shooters. You're Kyle Corver, where you don't have the ball in your hands, but for your career you shot forty four percent from three. Yeah. I'm James Harden. But I only shot thirty seven percent. Who are you gauging as a better shooter? Am James I better Harden. because I came no, off no. the dribble? No, it's James Harden because the difficulty of his shots are much harder than the ones that Cal Kuzma are getting from Cal catch Cor- and shoot. Cal Cal Cor- I don't know why I say Kuzma. But we but that I think that would make James Harden a better player, but I don't know if that makes him a better shooter. Because So you're took, saying just like pure shooter, Cal Corbin will probably that, be. That's yeah. what they're saying. Who's a better shooter? Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just yeah. saying when they talk about shooting, because you now have off the dribble, off the catch, you have st- side steps, step backs. It's so hard to gauge because it's like you're right. Damian Lillard dribbling it make I like that better. Mm-hmm. But damn, is he better shooter than Ray Allen because he can do it off the dribble? Who's a good just catch and shoot guy in the league right now? Just just Joe him. Harris, Luke Kennard, Luke Kennard. Okay, Luke Kennard's probably better. Um, Joe Harris too. I mean, yeah, it's a good one though. Joe Harris. It's, who's Luke a better Kennard shooter? Been leading the league for like the past two years. Who's a better shooter, Trey Young or one of those guys? Last year, one of those guys. Yeah, last yeah, year. Luke Kennard, but was overall, like top ten to three. But overall, I would probably take Trey Young. Like if we're like as a career. I, was just, I think it's an interesting it's, debate. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. I don't even know where I land on it. I can see both ways. The better shooter because them shooters Kennard. are not going to shoot as well if they're taking the same shots as the other guys. But, but that's why they're the better shooter to me. Because that we're not even they focusing on one thing. Trey Young is a better player by far, 
But the better shooter is Luke Kennard because he, all he's doing is catching that motherfucker and shooting it. He shot uh, four, and he's four, just, 49% from three last year. On on about five attempts, too. Man, it's been the best shooter at basketball the last two years, if you ask me. Of, you know what I'm saying? Strictly off percentage, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, Back to the Derek tweets. This is my last one. Explain this text message in NBA terms. It's the text message says, we should get back together. Derek quoted it. It said, I'm very, I'm very interested to hear it. Kyrie, when he left LeBron. That ain't getting no giggles from me. Wait, 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 wait. It's like an ex that texts you and said, we need to get back together. And Derek is saying that Kyrie sent that with, with LeBron as the jokey joke. Or did LeBron send it to Kyrie? <laughs> the jokey joke is crazy. That's a jokey joke. Probably both. But you know what's funny, Derek? What? Out of all of these tweets, even the ones that you might be trying to get interactions, the one that has the most interactions is a picture of you and your cat. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the funny part about Twitter. Like, you can try... <laughs> But people probably care more about like the real, at least in our case, because that's a fact. Social media follow. Yeah, my biggest tweets are the ones where I'm just talking shit. Hey boy, yo, that tight ass shirt you got on. <laughs> but I done put out what's your favorite Lil Wayne a uh, lot. <laughs> Thinking that my biggest tweets is that Desmond Bain one where I talked about his own. I think I might have two Desmond Bain tweets. Honestly, why did up. you tweet that? What okay. you mean? No, because KB told him to. Of course, uh, I had to fucking choke him. They was playing to get against the each tweet. other, right? The Grizzlies in the what game? No, no, no. I had two tweets. So the first tweet you did send me about, the second tweet is some somebody posted a picture of him. Oh, he can't his put his arm, hands in his pockets or some yeah, shit. Yeah, and that shit got like 30,000 likes or something. And then I also had that one with Giannis, and I was like, this is Giannis when he see like... It was like Giannis, and it was like the fullback dive play out of Madden. Mm. And that shit got like over 30,000. No Mike good. said something and didn't say that it came from Twitter, and I'm like, I'm going to tweet that. And he didn't say it. I got that from Twitter. <laughs> like, you stole this. You got this from blah blah. Oh I'm, yeah! Wow, Mike set a motherfucker up nastily. No, no, don't say that. I I said it, and he laughed at about. He laughed, and at I it. said I'm finna go tweet that. You didn't say I got that from Twitter. Oh until yeah. Like after okay. I came back, like Mike, blah blah. They saying this blah blah tweet. He's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bro, what is on my timeline? See, this is why I don't be Booty. on Twitter for you, bro. It is a tweet that said manga panels that get me hard AF. <laughs> Why is that the like I just refreshed Twitter and that's the first thing what I the see. Fuck is, this is what he's referring to? That's what he's referring to. What is this? I, I don't know the context. I mean it's a somebody it's a it's manga, but I don't know what manga it is. Bro. Let me keep my comments on my <laughs> That shit ain't nothing. They ain't doing nothing. You want to hear some real off off topic <laughs> shit? It literally was a It's girl. just a picture of Nami. This I, is just Nami. She's not even doing anything. She's sitting just sitting the there. Cloud. Yeah, she's just sitting there. Wait, like fully clothed. Yeah. <laughs> it was one girl looking at herself in a mirror. Just a cartoon. <laughs> like, what the hell? Bro. Wait, he needs to stay off Instagram then. Right. If this is what he's <laughs> getting him, man. What you talking about, though, Mike? You remember, so when I had that the first kickback in my house, you had seen all those plastic. Like, I had all that plastic silver. He's like, damn, I need to get me one of those. I just ran out yesterday. Just now? Yes. Damn. Like, all of it's going, like, I think I ran out of, like, the last couple knives. So, that shit held me down for, like, four one? months. And I might need to. Do you not have any, like, actual, like, No, I do. I do, but I just don't want to do dishes 24-7. Exactly. I got yeah. everything everything in the house. I got every dish. But I'm buying plates. I'm buying forks, spoons, bowls, cups, because I don't, I'm not. I had to do like dishes that. for, like, the first 16, 17 years of my life. Do you got a dishwasher? Yeah, I do, I don't but I, it's, that did. motherfucker broke. Oh, it's broke? Damn. I yeah. got to call the actual... I can't call... The apartment complex? I got to call the people that made it. What? That's kind of crazy. And I called them, but they had some shit going on. I was just like, I'll call it later. That, that makes no sense. Though. Yeah, usually the apartment no, complex exactly. fixes that's everything. That's what they supposed to do. Yeah, that's a bad maintenance thing. <sighs> they give me your and I love my around. dishwasher, but still. I got four dishes. True. Yeah. It is just you. It would be the principal that pisses me off. Yeah, I'm paying it's for always, this it's, service. It's always yeah. the principal. And it's always it's always personal. It's never business. <laughs> I don't believe in that bullshit. It's, it's never personal. Bro, I business. fucked my ceiling fan in the apartment yesterday. complex. Oh, no, it's wow. personal. I you see that notification? Yeah. About the Nashville being the place where the White Sox might move to? Wait. What? In 2029 when their contract is up with, with guarantee rate. That's kind of crazy. I will say this right now. If they move outside of Illinois, Chicago, 
I am getting my tattooed covered, and I am not supporting that team anymore. There's, I don't blame you. That's kind of crazy to think that the Chicago White Sox would leave Chicago. Nobody Welcome. cares about the White Sox. Welcome. That's the reality of it. If they move, I would not be a White Sox fan. I would. I don't. I guess I'd be a Cub. I guess I would I be know. neutral for a minute before I made a decision. Fuck them. That's what I would. Do. <laughs> fuck them. Yeah. I would I'm have a White Sox shirt to say "fuck them." Yeah. All cap letters. That would be so sad. Frank yeah. Thomas, Scott Posednik. The 2005 World Champ- World Series, all of that. Fuck just the goes. Reinsdorf family, bro. Everything they touch crumbles to the ground. And the only reason the Bulls are still here because they're the Bulls, and we got six championships here. <laughs> like that, they don't know how to manage an organization. I feel like owning two different big organizations seems kind of like it. You don't, you can't like focus in on one, right? Like I feel like that's kind of hard to manage. Nah, that's a that's an excuse. He ain't doing shit. Yeah. He hasn't no prioritized owner. either of the two. He not doing shit. They just they just collect money. Yeah. Literally. He don't want to spend it. Yeah, I guess. At the expense of your fan base, Mike. Yeah. Like True. the fans pay the bills. Yeah. Sad days. If they move I'm be so sad. I would yeah, I I, it, I couldn't imagine Chicago without the Go ones. Cubbies. That fuck. would be crazy. Yeah. yeah that be- arena would just be there. Yeah. Cuz it's not like the United Center where it could be used. Nah, they're gonna tear that bitch down. Please believe it. They gonna we're gonna wake that up. I mean the South Side won't have nothing at that point. We're gonna wake up and they're they gonna have moved the team overnight like the uh Baltimore Colts when they moved to uh Indianapolis. Oh that's the Browns. The C- Seattle did the same One shit. One of the with football OKC? teams though. No, 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 no. Oh, you mean like literally? Literally overnight, <laughs> while everybody was asleep, they moved the team. It's like the Springfield Isotopes moving to Albuquerque. They said, hey, none of y'all fans finna act a fool. They don't know who, what team that is. That's for, that's for the three people. There's <laughs> for three people that watch this that will understand that. I try to look for, I think, a Springfield Isotope shirt for you. It's wonderful. I will wear the fuck out of that. They don't think he will. Have y'all heard that story? What? The Wanda Franco story? No. Allegedly, Wanda Franco has been dealing with underage girls. Oh, that, um, y'all did talk about that. And he's under investigation. He's on administrative leave while they go through it all in a DR. And some people are speculating he will never play in the major leagues ever again. Oh, shit. Because uh, from, from the allegations at first, it was one young lady. But now more people are coming out that said, no, no, no. He's been doing this for some time. That um, is this is so weird, that man bro. signed a triple-digit contract. Didn't he, like, $100 million or something? Yeah. 100 wow. and like, yeah, 100 plus. Uh this is crazy. Uh, honestly, that's the only word I can really it's think sad about. To say it's, it's another story that, another like story that just comes out. It's like you don't want to hear. Yeah. Is the MLB almost still, every day? Is there a way where the MLB can get out of that contract and not pay him? I don't know. They just dropped uh, legal action. Jeff Passon just dropped a full article like right during his podcast. So I'm gonna read through and figure out what happens with his contract. I would assume that because it's out of the control of the organization that they don't owe him the money that they gave him. But that's me not knowing everything yet. So yeah. I would have to read that article to figure it out. But yeah, it's some crazy shit because Wanda Franco is one of the best players in the league, you know, and he's only like 22, 23. Um, and he was out here allegedly doing shit that is not good. Yeah. And it might cost him his career, which is a small price to pay for work, messing with some underage women, girls. Can't even call them women. Motherfucker weird. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't go your ass to Tampa Bay and find you a grown woman with a hundred million, he's a, he's married. He has a wife and a kid, like a up age wife and a, a kid. So this other stuff was just outside just of that. Shit. Yeah, and uh, I read that his his wife obviously did not know that he was doing things with any woman, but definitely not an underage girl. So yeah, um, I guess we we'll, we we'll just know more about it as time comes. But yeah, move his ass to Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> with the White Sox, let him suffer. <laughs> <laughs> you see, everybody, the White Sox traded away, look really good in that new team. Did y'all know that there was a city in Florida? I don't even watch ba- baseball no more. Okay. That's how much the White Sox do to me. Yeah. I can't tell you who's in fucking first. No, nah, I take that back. Cause still the Braves. Acuna going to be my boy. Yeah, still the Braves. So. What were you saying there? Did y'all know that there was a city in Florida, like a little town that's like dedicated to people like him? Yes, that like, I heard about this. Yeah, they it's like a city for sex but offenders. They are, it's all over there. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I, Tavares just told me about this. I, 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 it's yeah. a place where if you do do that crime, or right, like you can go there and be accepted. Right, because so the land was bought by a guy that went to jail for that. Yeah, 
and he's like, hey, we kind of exile from the world, so let's just have our own little spot where all of us could just be okay. But I then there are land. residents that huh? live there but that call aren't. it pedophile land. I've, yeah, yeah. Hey. yeah. It's, but it's people that live there that weren't originally sex offenders. Mm. They lived there, and so these people moved in, and they still live there. So like eighty percent of the people there are sex offenders, but like twenty percent of them aren't. I'm selling my crib and moving. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you download the Citizen app, you can see the sex offenders that live near you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did that the other day, and I was disappointed at how many names popped up. Yeah, I had um, I had told your YouTube channel, um, of the guy who went to the city and like interviewed all the people that lived there. I saw TikToks of that video. Yeah. I haven't watched the full video. Though. He has a great YouTube channel, bro. I love. It. He goes to like these random cities that are like known for crazy shit and like interview people. I like You're that type about, of content. That, that's um, so uh, I think his name is Tyler or something. Uh, but the name of the channel it ain't. Uh, yes, um, Tyler Ola. Uh, Oliveria. Oh. I thought you was, was probably talking about uh, what's it, White Soft Underbelly or something? I don't know. I'm not that. Streaming a channel. It's a lot of investigative journalism channels out there that I really fuck with. Yeah, that do stuff like this and different things. Go to like a, a neighborhood that has a high crime rate or a oh, high drug say, use. Go to a neighborhood like Old Block and play basketball. So <laughs> there is a channel out there that did go to Old Block. Um, what's that guy? That guy's actually he actually won awards, not for that specifically. Um, but it's a yeah. He went to O Block and kind of tried to document life. What do you say? We almost did that. that was was the video. Josh, Josh, was that Josh H's yeah. doing? Yeah. That was Josh H. That was rookie Josh. H. That was Josh H. Stupid ass idea. <laughs> Shout oh. out to my boy. I'm, what happened? One person dead and another was injured when the house of t- uh, Tennessee Titan cornerback Kayla Farley exploded overnight. Holy what shit! What is happening? I've seen a lot of videos of houses exploding lately, and I just don't, I don't know what's going on. I've been seeing a lot of, I've seen two videos this week of like something in like penetrating a car through the window shield. Oh, I've seen those too. And I'm just like, damn, one girl, some, a random spear came flying through her window shield. crazy. You know who lives in Tennessee? Josh H. We just talked about that. Yeah. Shout out to my boy Josh H, man. I wish we had All-Star Weekend. I love when we link up with Josh H. Hopefully I get my car back today, man. Why? Kill that ass car. Yeah. I got it wrapped. What oh, color? I don't want to tell anybody. because I mean, you're going to see it, obviously. Mm-hmm. But he's been sending me pictures, and I'm I'm like, fuck, I don't really, I don't really like it Damn. no more. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, really I saw like you last more. night when I was going home. Oh yeah, we did drive. Are you one of them type of people that see it at first? He like, well, you know, he lives different from us. He might have to take a whole other route to get what he's. Are you that damn different? That type of people where, uh, type of person where shit grows on you? Absolutely. Well, the thing about a rap, if I don't like it, I just take the shit off. Mm. I I mean, I I would go professional. His truck don't make music, but it rap. I would. I'm. I'm gonna keep it though, even if I don't like it, just because it's different. I don't know any car on the road with this exact color. We on the moon. Oh, you went with a unique color. Yeah, I thought you would have. I thought got, you went with like some. He got Ger- like normal. He got Gerber baby blue. I like that. He got the. He got that same green that the Nike pants I got. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that Dookie green. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, tur- I got. I got like a, a Dookie brown though. That turd green. I hate that. A loose brown like, I'll, color. I'll, I'll, be, I'll take my car to the dealership, and it'll be a a, a, a BMW X5 brown. Like, why did y'all even make that? Who bought that? <laughs> you about to see. My car is brown now. Brown Benzes and shit. Brown Audis. Disgusting. With red caplets. And tinted windows. I can't wait to see. Okay, Deshaun Watson. I don't get the reference. Like, if it be looking it's like a brown. brown. Oh. Holy cow. Oh. Right. When, is our, when is our fantasy dress? September 3rd. Where is it happening? I at? did like Terrence. They, I'm not volunteering my spot this time around. Oh, I haven't said we can go to your shit. <laughs> All right, cool, gonna okay. be in that one room. No, let's be in KB basement again. <laughs> I just said I'm not happy. I know it. I'm volunteering. It. <laughs> you have your own. Spot. Why don't we do it in your house? <laughs> I can't. Right, y'all all have your own spots. My basement is no different than y'all places. I've been in your place. Your place is bigger than my basement. So why why That's do you go to lie. my? It is. That's a lie. What happened? I said that his place is bigger than my basement. So when you say space, it don't make I think sense. That is a lie. I think your basement is bigger than his apartment. That's wild. 
No, 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 not his apartment. That 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 sounds crazy. But his his area where we at, his apartment got a bathroom. No, it's there. not because the other side nobody used anyway because there's nothing there. But that motherfucker is space though. You could push it there. But we don't. It's the point though. Nobody's Man, hanging out over there. What if he had a nice little ping pong table or some shit with a pool table? You will get a ping pong table. I don't got no room. You could though. Oh, okay, true. I'll just move my couch. Exactly. Why do you I need just, a Why do you need a couch? Yeah, forget it. I'll just sit on my. What if it's trying to interior here. interior design my, my house? My living room got got some space, but you only asking what? How many motherfuckers? How many people was it? Like eight? I'm inviting some extra people if it's at your place. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got more room, and I got people that live below me. AKA my landlord daughter. I don't really want to. I mean, how many people is Parking there? sucks. <clears throat> so it's Mason, John, Derek, Mike, Pierre, Terrence, Kai, Remy. Eight people. Caleb will come. Caleb is not coming back to Chicago. Caleb for will come. He he was in the league last year. He did it from Atlanta. Oh. Well, if we tell him, he'll drive up. No, we're going to tell him don't drive before fucking fantasy uh. draft. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised yeah, you know, if Caleb just showed when up. Derek come, <laughs> when Derek comes, come, he got to bring Angie. When John comes, he got to bring Joe. That is true. So you got to account for at least five more people. Luckily, Dana got school, so. I'm not volunteering my spot this time. So we got to figure something out. We better, better go to a bar or some shit. That works. We could do it here. Didn't we do it at we a bar? We do, do it, it at a bar one year. We could do it here. We own, well, we, we rent this spot. We could do it here. It's in my name. We could do this shit here. We can do it here. Is this enough space? Well, we just got to get a couple more chairs. Just go in another room. Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I guess Bro, we're doing it at the studio. Seven. Oh, shit. That's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, we can do it you here. You know what they're going to say in the comment section? And Turn the camera zone, it. stream it. <laughs> at, at night, the parking lot empty? Yeah, at that time, the parking yeah. lot be empty. We got, we got restaurants and shit around. Yeah, we decent. We why, yeah, here. why are we overthink this? Just we come to right the here. studio. Yeah. They never been to the studio. Bring a hoodie just in case, because we don't control the AC. Yeah, because it is a little, <laughs> it's a little chilly in here right now. Yeah, yeah. No, that's. Well, that's we better get up. we better get hit with a heat wave tomorrow, right though. Y'all ready for that hundred degree weather for the next two days? I'm Hell staying yeah. inside. Plus. Hey, I'm staying inside. Hell yeah, I'm ready. Cause I'm staying my ass inside. <laughs> the way they deal with your maintenance, your air go out. You fucked. <laughs> no, my, my air be blowing. We should have, we should have a Madden fuck. tournament. We have it like sixty some degrees. We should have a Madden tournament for our order. Ooh, we do have the Xbox and the PlayStation, but no mutt, obviously. Oh no, Mike! You know yeah, you Mike put a thousand dollars in, and we grand them no, three no. times. Man. and you can't change the playbook. Like three minute quarters. Yeah, three minute quarters. You can't change the playbook. No, I do five. minutes. you go in like that, still? Yeah, you said five minutes. We gonna have we have to do if it's eight of us. Five minute running clock. If it's eight of us, that's four games, then six games, then seven total games that have to go through. Five minute. Quarters is too long. That's true. Yeah, we could do. We could easily do that. So everybody pull up like an hour or two before. Mm-hmm. Or no, we might have to do a days before because sometimes in the, the apps you have to you can't change the date or time. All the same day. Yeah, the draft order. We have to see. Who, we have to talk to commission and see what he's up to. I thought D Mills. Was, oh no, Terrence the commission. Yeah. Terrence is. I think I was the commissioner last year. Go buy y'all y'all fantasy magazine. I'll be using TikTok. Oh, TikTok okay. be having all the fans. My channels. chat going to help me out. <laughs> Yo, chat. You're not streaming it. I'm going to be streaming on my phone. <laughs> you definitely can. No, we can't. We're not giving them permission to stream this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all know who y'all eyeing for y'all first round pick? Yep, because I know I'm going to get the first pick total I pick. Have. Yeah, I don't. I'm, getting I'm just going to wing baby. it. Big Chase guy. Last year, Derrick Henry was my first round pick. Very great. Very great pick last year. I'm not going running back first round this year. No? Mm-mm. What do you want to do? Wide receiver. Wasn't your team – was your team good last year? Nope. Oh, <laughs> it depends on my pick. Nope, it was not. If I have an early pick, I'll probably take a running back. But it's only like a couple of running backs to take. So if I don't have an early top pick – I got two I'm sleeper going picks receiver. that I'm getting at the end of the draft, and I know they're going to perform. I'm going to just get players that I like. I'm gonna put them on a the squad. Good looking guys. Draft a team full Players of light that are good skins, on the field, Mike. huh? Draft a team full of light skins. Mm, it was the first pick in the light skin well, football draft. Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> but even in the f- football, because o- everybody, I'll be talking, I'll be reading, be like, it's all draft the the way the way Christian McCaffrey be uh, <laughs> playing on the field. You might have to qualify him as a light skin brother. 
I think you gotta go with Drake in London if you're talking about wide, uh, light skinned wide receivers. Drake, Mike London. Evans, yeah, Mike, Evans. Oh, Mike Evans, yeah, Christian Watson, Keenan Allen, yeah, Keenan Allen, Keen, Keenan, I don't know, Ian, <laughs> Austin Eckler. Oh, that's a good running back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Um, Zay Herbo, did he get? Do he get the? No, the nickname no. alone might get him. No, they don't no. get him. No, okay. uh, I'm like that. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> 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 and then who would be we'll talk about lower did he get it darren Wall- uh, darren waller is not light skin he he in the middle no. he's austin color he's not light skin so who you're like who really who I, don't, I, I feel like i remember him being lighter who you're like who you're light skin tight end because kelsey white, travis white kelsey. i don't know Kel- 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 no if christian mccaffrey light skin travis kelsey light skin if that's travis the case travis <laughs> might be dark skin of christian mccaffrey <laughs> light skin. travis kelsey if that's the case then austin him. hooper is definitely a light skin tight end who he play for um because he don't play for the falcons no more last time i checked i think he played for the browns oh, okay i picked cal pitts last year as my tight end i'm telling <laughs> he don't sleep on this year Fucked up i think i had waller you did you have kelsey i had george waller. kittle play for the raiders, raiders. okay this year I'm actually locked in, not necessarily fantasy, but to football in general. Speaking of uh, light skin tight ends, uh, Graham just did some shit. He just got in trouble. Yep. Jimmy Graham. Jimmy yep. Graham. Mm. Doing what? I think he got out already. He had an episode. Like he did some manic uh, shit. I forgot what it was, but yeah. You know what he did? I read the Twitter post, but I don't remember. But. They say he had some type of like psychic episode and they released him already. Shit was weird. It's that football shit, man. What's up with, with Jeremy Sohan and Lakers fandom? Why why are they going at each other on Twitter all day, every day? I, I think it started during the playoffs. I think he was like tweeting shit and I think it's, he's just continuously just going with the troll about it. This is it's such he a random beef. P. He was wandering in traffic. Yeah, Ooh, I see shit. it. They said he might have had a seizure. But uh what happened? It goes it goes a long way. He just went oh, because the ones oh, that happened shit. recently, these are the ones that I'm talking about. Uh, one of the L- Lakers Muse pages said, How do I fit this into my bio? It's a trash can, you know the old meme. And then the bio, I mean his header Banner ended up being or header, whatever it is. Jeremy. Not. And then Jeremy quoted it said, Damn, your header is cute. And then that same account tweeted the stats of LeBron and the stats in, of Jeremy is, and then he quoted it, said funny, I've never said his name once and then yesterday he was getting his hair cut and the dude that was cutting his hair had on Lakers gear, he said this is the last time he'll ever cut my hair. <laughs> so, I mean he's having a lot of fun with it, but it's yeah. still just a random ass beef. You know, his villain shit. Yeah. Now Lakers, you know them Lakers fans gonna take that shit like to the heart. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Do you hate Jeremy Sohan now, Mike? No. I uh, barely knew that shit was going on. <laughs> Let's do these talks. Uh, we appreciate y'all watching, listening to this episode through Damn, the wire. Almost two hours and um, we appreciate you so dearly. Uh, we will not be here again on Saturday, but you will get the episode on the fly. So next time you see us, it's Stu next Tuesday. Peace.